we see throughout the word of God that the remnant have always been a select few, a small group of people chosen by God's grace who will turn back to him during a time of wickedness, who will serve him, honor him, and trust him. In the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9, it says, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. book of Revelation we see that five out of the seven churches were told to repent in the end of times or God would remove their lampstand that's over 70% of churches in the body of Christ told to come to repentance God is going to use his remnant army to bring life back to the body of Christ and in these end times the remnant will spread revival throughout the nations outreach in the word of God, it is a command that when you are a saved believer, you are to go preach the gospel to all nations. Every creature, God is sending his remnant army to go to the highways and byways, the places that nobody wants to go, to witness in spirit and in power. He's sending his soldiers to go reach the one and leave the 99. God is looking for people who are willing to be discipled and make disciples. Center. Many people think that a church is only a place of worship, but the church is really much more than that. A center is a community where a variety of ministries come alive. RROC, the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, will be a place where people with different assignments, callings, and destinies will come together in unity to glorify Jesus Christ. We need to normalize discipleship and true accountability in the body of Christ. The Remnant Revival Outreach Center will be a training facility to equip the saints not only in person but also digitally throughout the nations. God is doing a quick work using the digital spaces. The return of our Lord and Savior is right around the corner. The Remnant Revival Outreach Center is a place where you can be planted and grow into your calling, your destiny, and your ministry. Click the link and take this free discipleship course to become a member and to be held accountable and be discipled digitally or in person. God bless you all and welcome to the Remnant Army. throughout the word of God that the remnant have always been a select few a small group of people chosen by God's grace who will turn back to him during a time of wickedness who will serve him honor him and trust him in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9 it says except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a small remnant we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah the book of Revelation we see that five out of the seven churches were told to repent in the end of times or God would remove their lampstand that's over 70% of churches in the body of Christ told to come to repentance God is gonna use his remnant army to bring life back to the body of Christ and in these end times the remnant will spread revival throughout the nations In the word of God, it is a command that when you are a saved believer, you are to go preach the gospel to all nations. Every creature, God is sending his remnant army 
to go to the highways and byways, the places that nobody wants to go, to witness in spirit and in power. He's sending his soldiers to go reach the one and leave the 99. God is looking for people who are willing to be discipled and make disciples. Center. Many people think that a church is only a place of worship, but the church is really much more than that. A center is a community where a variety of ministries come alive. RROC, the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, will be a place where people with different assignments, callings, and destinies will come together in unity to glorify Jesus Christ. We need to normalize discipleship and true accountability in the body of Christ. The Remnant Revival Outreach Center will be a training facility to equip the saints not only in person, but also digitally throughout the nations. God is doing a quick work using the digital spaces. The return of our Lord and Savior is right around the corner. The Remnant Revival Outreach Center is a place where you can be planted and grow into your calling, your destiny, and your ministry. Click the link and take this free discipleship course to become a member and to be held accountable and be discipled digitally or in person. God bless you all and welcome to the Remnant Army. Welcome back to the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, where Jesus is our rock. And our name is kind of like the rock to our <laughs> Remnant Revival Outreach Center, right? It kind of sounds like rock. That's why they did it. My name is Alexander Lorenzo, and this is the pre-show. We're going to have a main show. We're going to have beautiful worship today with a powerful word from Apostle Richard Lorenzo. It's going to be powerful because I'm going to be real with you guys. It's always powerful when you're moving with the Spirit of God. Today, we're going to be talking about, or Apostle is going to be talking about defeating guilt. If you've ever felt guilty for anything, I know I have in the past. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've done a lot of bad things. I've talked about my testimonial here. And I felt a lot of guilt for that, a lot of weight. It actually held me back in a lot of areas in my life. Times where I didn't even realize it was affecting me. I had relationships with people and I didn't realize that it was hindering the relationship. I didn't realize that there were certain people that would look, me, look at me a different way because of the guilt that I felt. And we all know their spirits. And today, Apostle is going to be defeating guilt. You know, it's funny. I want to tell you a little story. And I'm going to go into discipleship, which I've been telling you guys is very important. Every service, I'm going to tell you how important discipleship is. And it's beautiful because we have an online ministry. You're watching the online live stream, the Ecclesia. The place where we all gather can now be done on YouTube. And guess what? So can discipleship. But back to the story. I'm over here serving at The Rock, just doing my thing. And, I, and you know, if you guys didn't know, we have multiple pastors. We have Pastor Benji, Pastor Joel. I was getting a haircut by Pastor Benji, right? And he released, this is the beauty of honoring a leader and discipleship. He released the word. He, I don't even think he meant, I forgot exactly what it was. It was just crazy. He released a specific word. And I was thinking about it so, for so long. He was like, hey, I remember what he said. He said, for all of the things that Paul did before he was actually saved, before he got knocked off his horse, he said, he was killing Christians. He was killing Christians. He was doing horrible things, right? Imagine if he held on to all of that guilt. Would he be able to actually reach the nations the way he did? Right? So if you're dealing with things in your past, it's holding you back from spreading the gospel, also feeling good and just getting closer to God. And I believe that today's service is going to bring a lot of breakthrough in a lot of people's lives. 
But before we jump into that, we have a couple announcements. I didn't even finish the story. He told me something. I went home. I thought about it for days and days. I'm in my secret place. And I realized that he was correct. I didn't even know I was dealing with the guilt completely. And I realized he was correct. And the Holy Spirit showed me in a vision. And I was crying uncontrollably. And I got one of the craziest deliverances of my life. And it was amazing. And I want you guys to feel that here today. Let's jump into the announcements now. Revivals. We have confirmed revivals with confirmed dates. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Marcus Rogers. That is confirmed. In Chicago, November 10th to the 12th. If we can have the link drop, if you can't drop the link, make sure to follow Pastor on all of his social media, his YouTube channel, the Instagram. That's where you get a lot of these announcements. That's the first thing. Also, we have unconfirmed, but we're thinking about doing a revival in October in California and New York in October as well. So two different revivals in person. If you can't make it here, whatever the case is, I know you're watching online. We're going to different states, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we go to different countries. Actually, technically, I mean, it's, it's a commonwealth. Uh, Pastor just did a revival in Puerto Rico, so that's already happening. And I want you guys to know that the in-person, I like the online experience. I feel the presence of God. You can feel the presence of God anywhere. But what I do know is in person, the atmosphere is crazy. The atmosphere is amazing. People talk about it all the time. I've seen people get instantly healed just by the atmosphere. No word. They just walk in and get instantly healed. So make sure you head on over to Marcus Rogers and, and Apostle Richard Lorenzo Jr.'s revival and the Holy Spirit, of course, revival in Chicago, November 10th to the 12th. That is officially confirmed. I want to ask you guys the questions in the, in, in the chat box. What's one thing that you're grateful this week for this week? What's one thing you're grateful for? Me, I'm going to be honest with you. I was actually thinking about it all week. I'm grateful for the, for the business that I have and, and the occupation that I have. I'm grateful for actually being able to work from home and be able to provide for my family. I'm actually grateful for that. Not a lot of people have jobs. Not a lot of people have a way to, you know, actually supply for themselves. And I do. And, and I'm really grateful for that. It's a beautiful thing. And, and having gratitude actually makes me work harder as well. I want you to know that. Um, I want you guys to put in the chat box. I'm going to check the chat box. What are you grateful for? What is one thing you're grateful for? Let's check the chat box. I'm going to shout out the best comments. To be alive. Hey, amen. I almost died too. I was homeless too. I'm grateful for my house, for my family and work family. Hey, amen. Grateful for life itself. That's, that's the best thing to be grateful for. I'm grateful for Jesus. I'm grateful for the fact that I even know Jesus. There's a lot of people that don't know Jesus and don't have access to the information. It's crazy. Being born again. Amen. I am too. And for the person that said being born again, what, what day did you get saved? Mine was August 30th, a couple days after my birthday. You guys should know that date. I hope all of, everyone drop the date they got saved in the chat box. I want you to drop the date you got saved and how many years you've been saved for in the chat box. Let's see how many, let's see if we got new people or some, some more older, wiser uh, men and women of God. Let's see what you guys got. And um, guys, another form of evangelism, share the video, like the video, leave comments. YouTube's an algorithm. The more time it, you get interactions, the more times it gets spread to other people. There could be people that don't even know about Jesus or the gospel that just come across this video just for the simple fact that it's being spread on the YouTube algorithm. So like it, comment, share, et cetera, et cetera. I have a person to interview here soon, but I just want you guys to run that up. And final announcement, you guys know, I'm going to get into some scripture today, very brief scripture that I thought was very interesting about discipleship, online discipleship through the school app. Dana, you posted a link. She's going to post a link. She's going to pin it to the top of the chat box. Discipleship, disciple, I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough. Imagine, right? Imagine you go to the field and let's say you grow apples, right? And there's a whole bunch of apples, a whole bunch of apple trees. It's, it's amazing. It looks beautiful. And you pick it for the next two months. And you're picking apples and you're picking apples and you're putting them in crates. You're putting them in crates. But then you have no way to preserve the apples. And then you just still start going bad. 
And then eventually they just, they're dead. The apples literally just die, right? That is similar to discipleship. You have to fight for your faith. You, gotta, you have to fight because there's enemies attacking, right? In the spirit, you have to fight for it. You have to want it. You have to become an actual, like, student of the gospel. You got to put yourself around other people that are mightier than you in the faith, have been there longer, and, and actually try to increase in faith and increase in the spirit and level up in the spirit. You can't just get saved and just chill. Like, are you trying to win, right? You're trying to win. Everybody here wants to win, right? And, and the way you win is getting closer to God. That's the best answer I can give you. Don't be a couch potato Christian. Let's push the gospel to all nations and let's, let's be fired up about Jesus, fired up about Christ. So get the discipleship. We have some scripture. But first, I want to do a quick interview. We have this guy here. You, you're looking almost as good as me, man. I'll be honest with you. You're looking at, how you doing? What's up, man? What's your name? Adonis. Nice to meet you. Let me get that tie, bro. Here you go, man. Have it. I'm just joking. <laughs> Come over here a little bit. So Adonis, how, how long have you been saved? Uh, about five months. Five months. Okay, so new in the faith. Yeah. Amen. And when, when did you get saved? Uh, when? Yeah. What's the date? I'm doing you a favor right now. You, you got to remember that date. Five months ago would be uh, March. March what? 20th. And why did you get saved? Was it like, like a spirit of God? Like what happened? Like briefly? It's uh, briefly. Um, I've been a, around Christians like all my life. And um, I don't know. I was just in a, in a lot of darkness, you know, the dark, you know, the dark world, you know, it pulls you in when you don't have Christ in you. But when you have Christ and you seek him, you know, he gives you what you need. And it's that, that's that Holy Spirit, you know. And once he fills you, 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 you're able to be empowered and, and, and you know, encouraged to do what, what he called us to do pretty much is preach the gospel. So you got filled with the Holy Spirit, got convicted, and you're like, I got to get re-saved re or, re or recommitted. Recommitted, yep, recommitted. Holy Spirit filled. Um, I've, I, I, I came here to be baptized and, you know, feel the service. I mean, outside, I was, I was feeling the Holy Spirit, man. I was speaking in tongues. I was, you know, you know everybody was just together, and I loved it. You know, it's something we need to all be, you know, proud of. Amen. Which brings me to my next question. So you got baptized here. What made you want to come back here? What's like the biggest reason? God. Always God. That's the main reason to, to you know, be in communion with the brothers and sisters and, you know, just to be around the, you know, the spirit. Because when you're around with your brother and sister, we sharpen each other, you know. And the spirit is definitely, the spirit of God is definitely dwelling among, among us. Now, I mean, even when we're alone, but when we're together, it's just like God is touching everybody. He can heal anything, anything. Anything is possible when God is here with all of us here. Amen. It says that exactly in the Bible. Second question. In the five months, has there been a test of your faith, like, a, like just a crazy test? And, and just tell us briefly about that test. Uh, the test of everything. Come, I mean, the enemy knows, you know, where to go. He knows how to hit low. But greater is he who is in me than he is in the world. Um, that's what I believe. And I've been tested. I mean, the, you go through the fire. And when you go through the fire, you pass that honeymoon stage. And God is like, you got this. You know, I, I'm not going to keep holding you on that bike when you're pedaling. Um, you got a specific situation, like, when you got tested? Like, like, um, like a trial? Uh, definitely. I've been, uh, the, can I say that? The devil tempted me, definitely, by using a, 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 a female to come and tempt me with lust. Mm. Yes. And that was when I was first starting walking. And um, he tried it thinking I would fall, but I didn't. Because the Holy Spirit, I ran to God. That's the main thing I could tell you. So wait, wait, okay. So you got tempted. So how'd you, how'd you run to the God? Like you were sprinting, like a four flat? I hit that Joseph, that sprint. Man, I left. So what did that mean specifically for maybe that's someone that doesn't understand? Like, like, what does that mean? Like secret place? Like, what do you mean by running to God? I ran to the word. I ran to his word. I ran to the, to his presence, which is in your secret place. I started speaking to him, you know, praying, having a connection with him. I think that's the main thing. A lot of people that don't feel like they're confident, just go to God and he will, he will give you that what you need. He will give you everything you need for because you, he already knows what you need before you ask. Amen. So you overcame it using Jesus and the Holy Spirit, not by yourself, not in the flesh. Nope. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Amen. A lot of people think they could just get to overcome things like I'm just going to defeat it. I'm going to defeat it myself. But I've seen it definitely a lot. I mean, even in family members, but you know, I pray for them and we're all going to get together and we're all going to praise the Lord and worship him. And I'm, and I know the fire of God is going to be dwelling among us no matter where we go. Amen. I got an interesting one for you. And then we have another interview. Last question. Are you scared to share your faith with people? 
No, not at all. I'm What's your 30-second pitch to an unbeliever? Boom, go. Ready? Go. Uh, God is the answer. Uh, he's the truth, the way, and the life, and he will save your life. What are you talking about? What is God? What, what, what is that? What? Are you, what, what? He is the, the king of kings, man. Uh, if you look uh, in, his, in his word, which is the Bible, you will, you will find what you need. Oh, the Bible is, is uh, translations off. It's like horrible, you know. I don't know. I don't believe in the Bible. Well, if you give it a chance, you know, what are you going to lose? If it's not real, then it's not real. But if it's real, your life is being saved. And not only that, but your life is literally going to change because the light of God, because he is the light of the world, he is going to change you. He's going to dwell you with light. And you're going to be on fire for him because he's going to change your heart. He's going to change your heart, literally, and place you with a new heart and change your spirit, a new creation in you. And you won't ever want to do the things you've ever done, lust and all these disgusting darkness that the world has to offer. You know, and that's, that's the only way I could tell you. Hey Amen. That's good news. Thank you so much, brother. You have a good one. Enjoy the service. You heard it there. You heard it. You have to use the Holy Spirit. You have to use the Spirit of God. You cannot do it by yourself. You can't do it in your own flesh. All right, we have another person to interview here. Nice shirt, bro. Come on. Come in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come in. What's your name? Tyler. Tyler? Yes, sir. Where are you from? Uh, Winter Garden, Florida. Winter Garden, Florida. You know, it's right up the, right up the street, man. <laughs> so you, you come here often? Uh, this is my second time. Second time. What made you want to come back? Uh, the first service that we came to last week was just amazing. It was Well, explain it. Like, what do you mean by amazing? Um, I would have to say that it's very different from my Sunday service church, and obviously it's Saturday night. Um, it's a little bit different scenery, but from the beginning, like the get-go, the worship is just so different. You could just kind of feel the spirit in the room. It's so thick. And um, I think from the start all the way to the finish, I mean, we stayed. I don't even know how late it was. It was like maybe 12, and we just we could stay the whole time because the spirit was there. You know, there wasn't any like, oh, this is kind of getting boring. I kind of want to leave, and it was just amazing from beginning to end. Hey Amen. How long have you been saved? I want to say truly saved probably, probably six months. Six months. Okay. Do you know the date? You should know the date, bro. Like, this is really important. I'm going to tell you. Audience, put your date in the chat box. You should know your date. If you don't know it, go find it. Find a picture. Find a video of you getting baptized and know it off the top of your head. What's the date? Uh, I got baptized, I think, in uh, March. March what? Probably middle March, March 12th, I think. So. Find the date, bro. Trust me. That's like your new birthday. That's like your new birthday. Okay, amen. I'm going to ask you a couple things. I already asked you the first one. Let's go to the second one. Can you share how you got through a trial, like, like a specific trial? What's the worst one in, was it you said, six months, five months? What's like a trial, and how did you overcome it? Unforgiveness, uh, that's a big one. And I, I would have to say... Um, Lust as well. I have a lot of open doors when I came into Christ. Like a lot. Well, do you have like a specific story? Like I want a story. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in church. Um, my parents are actually pastors, and it was kind of a very I want to say religious, and I kind of didn't know anything. I couldn't even tell you a Bible verse to be honest. We never opened the Bible, and that was 17 years of my life. Um, and then I had a really rough period. A lot of stuff happened. Um, relationship went bad. Uh, people in my family left me, a lot of, a lot of bad stuff going on. So it led me down a, kind of a rabbit hole of just doing chaotic things, uh, smoking a whole bunch of weed, drinking a whole lot, uh, fornicating with girls, just a whole bunch of like crazy stuff. And eventually it wasn't enough, but I got to a point where I was so depressed and just empty that I, I got into a fight with my dad. I left and I went to go, you know, end my life. And it's funny because my friend that's sitting over there, um, his mom actually came and got me before I was able to do anything. So she picked me up, and obviously I'm bawling my eyes out. And just from that day, I remember I was like, what am I doing here? Because I, I, had, I had no idea. Like, I didn't have any purpose. So I didn't, I didn't understand. I thought everyone hated me. No, one, no relationship seemed to go right. So I thought that I was the factor A problem. And uh, from that point, I cried out to God. I didn't really believe in God, so I just cried out to, like, whatever was out there. Um, and, dude, it was like a week of just nonstop Jesus, 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 like his, it was so different though. You know, it's crazy because I stumbled across a video of his and it was funny because I was like, I have never in my life seen that at my church. Why is that not here? Why have I never seen that ever? You know what I'm saying? And my, my parents are pastors. I've grown up, I've done the church thing. I've done churchianity. You know what I'm saying? I've done that. Um, but it's so different now. And I'm trying, I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to grow spiritually and just like understand these things. But it's so it's so unbelievable, like, what the presence of God will do to you, especially, like, understanding that the Holy Spirit's real. The Holy Spirit's real, and it has power. It has a presence that you cannot, like, explain. So 
I cried out, man, and like over the course of months, it was just like nonstop. I, I, I kid you not, I go to my work all the time now and people like are kind of like freaked out a little bit because now instead of, you know, wanting to get some sort of link for some sort of like drug or whatever it is and wanting to just go party or whatever, it's like, hey, by the way, like, I can't even lie to you. Um, I found this guy named Jesus. Like, it, it's changing my life. So I'm telling people at work, I'm telling like, I don't. So, so you're just preaching the gospel. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And um, I, I was, like, making videos on Instagram, like, changed my whole thing. And Amen. Yeah, and so um, started at work, then started, like, I felt like the Lord would tell me, go somewhere and tell somebody. And it was just, from there, it's just been. It's just been Amen. All right, last quick thing. I'm going to put you on the spot, okay? I want you to preach the gospel in under 20 seconds. Try to, 20, 30 seconds. Okay, preach the gospel. So you got to give me the full gospel as if someone's on the street. They're like, oh, man, I feel the presence of God. Now what? Okay, ready, set, go. So Jesus is God, and that is because God had to come out in a human vessel, right? So the fleshly body. But he had to be perfect to fulfill this, this prophecy that happened in the Old Testament, many prophecies. So when he died, now when that blood runs down the cross, that blood covers us for the rest of the New Testament. So the Old Testament is all sacrifice of animals, lambs, all the things to pay for it, it to atone for the debts of our sin. But now since Jesus has died, that cross, that timeline right there from now until forevermore, the blood is covering us. So now instead of sacrificing, we believe in Jesus, believe and confess with our mouth that he is Lord and he, raised, he rose from the dead. Now we're saved. Amen. I think I might have been a little bit over, but good job, man. Hey, rate it, rate it in the chat box. Rate his, uh, his pitch there. Thank you so much, brother. You have a good one. Enjoy the service. Okay. So, discipleship. 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 I got some scripture here for you guys really quickly. I want to go over some scripture with you because there's a lot of people not getting discipled. There's a lot of people that don't have a home church. There's a lot of people that don't have a community of people to hold them accountable. So, the Lord put it on my heart to look up some scripture in the Bible to show you it's real. Discipleship is real. You have to have people that are far ahead of you in the spirit holding you accountable to not make mistakes. There's mistakes that you don't know you're making. It's real. Trust me. You could be the smartest person in the world. It doesn't matter. It says in the Bible, he confines the wisdom of the wise. So you could think that you're doing everything perfect, like just perfectly move and, and you could be doing something wrong. And this is why you have to have powerful men and women of God to hold you accountable. So I want to talk about Acts 2, 40 through 42. This is actually the day after the Pentecost and Peter was speaking. And he said, and with many other words, he testifies and exhorted him saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized and that day, so right here, this is the main topic I want to highlight. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added on to them. So imagine, that's 3,000 people. You can Google it if you want to. But 3,000 people is like, it's like a stadium of people. Like I believe this church maybe holds like 750 to 1,000. It's like three of these churches, right? 3,000 people were added on to them. And listen to this right here. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Let me say it again. And they continued steadfastly. So they didn't just get added on the church. It clearly says it right here in the Bible. They continued steadfastly in the, apostle, the apostles' doctrine. Let me say it again. The apostles' doctrine. They didn't get added to the church and then go home and take their Bible and ignore everybody and just read the Bible in their own interpretation. They took the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Fellowship means like they were all hanging out, right? In the breaking of the bread and in the prayers. So that's one situation. That's one situation. And I explained to you guys, imagine you're a farmer, you harvest a whole bunch of crops, and then you have nothing to store it. You can't freeze it. You don't have pesticides to store it or preserve it. What's the point of farm, farming all of these people or fishing all of these people, bring them to Christ, if they never grow in Christ and they go back to the world? Right? This is why discipleship is so important. I want to also talk about David. Okay? David, as you can know, his story is, is, is so popular. Well, he fled. He fled to a cave. Right? And in that cave, 
He sat there, and I'm going to read it from the Bible. I'm not going to try to say it myself. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers, his father's household, heard about it, they went to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their commander. He became their commander. About 400 men were with him. So essentially, he went to the cave, he fled to the cave, and then there was like 400 people that were also in distress, and they all came and hanged out with him. Now, of those 400 people are some of the most biblical warriors, like some of the most outstanding humans. So while they were there, they weren't just chilling. They were getting discipled. But it says it right here. He became their commander. Here's a couple of them, right? I'm going to try to pronounce these names. The names are crazy. Joseph Bathsheba, right? He actually wielded his spear against 800 whom he killed one at a time. So he was just a powerful warrior, right? We have Eliza Hazor, son of Dodo, which stood his ground against the Philistines, even though the Israelites has retreated. So just a bit powerful man. And there's so many. There's, there's a list of like, there's a huge list. I'm not going to read through all of them. But the point is, people in distress flee to cave. They learned from David. They learned from, the, they allowed him to be the, the commander. They learned from him. And they became mighty. They became mighty men of God. So I'm, what I'm telling you, I'm, I'm pleading with you. If you're watching this on the live stream, I'm pleading with you. Take the discipleship course. 20 kingdom principles. Go to the link in the pinned comment. I got to go. Thank you for watching this. Enjoy the worship. Alex here. I'll catch you guys later. Be easy. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Remnant Revival Outreach Center. My name is Deaconess Jenny, and I'm here to do the announcements. Um, but on behalf of The Rock, we're just so happy that you guys are here. How many of you are first timers? Raise your hand. Woo! Amen. Amen. Quickly shout out um, where you're from. Illinois. How about anybody else? Miami. Amen. Anybody else outside of the state? Lakeland. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Let's just give a round of another round of applause for the first time. Let's give them a RROC welcome. Welcome. Alrighty. So, first slide, please. Okay. So, please be advised that we do record everything that goes on here at the rock um, in the sanctuary reason being is because just as the disciples recorded with pen and pip or pen and paper maybe a pen maybe not have been a pen however they did it back in the day we do the same thing but with video and it's to shine our light in a world that's really dark how many of us have heard about the rock because of social media right so um it's it's a it's we, we it's a way that God displays his power and we just want to steward that correctly so um, again be advised that we record next slide please stay connected we have all of our social media platforms if you haven't already go ahead and follow us because it's a good way to know where we're going when we go evangelize when we have events it's a good way to be plugged in and stay connected the church center app so every single person in this room has the church center app it is a way that we use for the giving and i really do encourage if you're going to give digitally to do it through this app because what happens is it keeps track of everything every transaction that you make so at the end of the year you get a tax statement that you could apply for your taxes so wisdom next slide please discipleship so as Alex was talking about what is the purpose of reaping a bunch of souls reaping a bunch of fish but there's no discipleship we have a discipleship course so please make sure that you're 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 um, plugged in there because it's it's a way to grow and even if you aren't a new Christian and you're you're seasoned take it anyway because there's so many fundamental Christian principles that are on there that it's it's good to kind of relearn the foundation a little bit and get it more solidified next slide please outreach so the times and locations are led by the spirit there are some changes being made for the revival tent so be it's another reason why to get plugged into our social media so you could see when we're going because it's we're shifting gears a little bit so again times and locations are led by the spirit get plugged in 
service schedule. If you were not aware, we just switched our Saturday nights to 7 p.m. rather than being 6 p.m. So we have Tuesdays at 7, Saturdays at 7, and we open the doors 30 minutes early, as you're aware. Come early so we can get to know you and all that good stuff. And also, if you have older children, the children's services after worship, four or three and below, is, is open now. Next slide, please support our merch we have i think it's been over there at the merch table if you don't haven't already checked it out go check it out with some good merch we also have some new designs coming so that's really exciting so make sure you're you're visiting that table for any new arrivals next and please everybody take out your cell phone where's my cell phone i'm gonna do it too take out your cell phone let's all silence it together because I say it every service, we don't want to be that guy, right? Your phone's just going off in the middle of a really powerful revelation. And again, we're going to be shifting gears. Pastor Benji is here for the opening invocation. Hallelujah. How y'all doing, family? How y'all doing, family? God bless y'all. Man, I'm so excited for tonight. Tonight's going to be a powerful night in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. How y'all doing? Y'all look lovely, by the way, all of y'all. Y'all look good. Come on, man. Let me get a hallelujah. Let me get an amen. Come on, get loose. Tonight is the night that we come together. We come to fellowship. We come to give our testimonies. We come to let loose the entire week. Whatever we had this whole week, we come to lay it at the altar, at the feet of Jesus Christ. We come to glorify him. We come to lift up his voice. All praise belongs to him. You want to know something? I've been catching so much revelation of God's love. It's been smacking me up. His love really been smacking me up. He's been taking me deeper in understanding his love, right? And I want to let you guys know something that his love overshadows all your sins. His, he loves you so much. If only you could understand the love that he has for you. I was actually watching a testimony video of this person who died he went to heaven he died because of an illness that he had and as he was dying he literally felt his soul leave his body and he was testifying how you feel it you physically feel it when your soul separates your body when you come out and he said as he as he came out of his body he seen everybody around the operating table he seen what they were doing to his body and then in an instant he shot up and he went to heaven and he said when he met Jesus first of all he said he seen Jesus and he didn't see his face but he was so beautiful he was so filled with light he was like all pain everything that he ever thought of it all just went away in that very instant remind you he was an atheist he didn't believe so as he's there he's getting filled with the love of God, he's realizing, he's realizing like, wow, this is truly real. All the preaching, everybody who's been talking to me about Jesus is truly real. So it was a point in a, in a testimony where he testifies he's walking with Jesus. And then it's a, it's a moment where Jesus stops and he's just crying. And he looks and he's like, Jesus, why are you crying? And Jesus looks at him, he says, my son, only if you know how much I love my children. Some of them only love me for what I have to offer, but they don't love me for me. I love them so much that I wish that they could see the love that I truly have for them. How much that I want them to be with me. I want them to be around me. I want to fellowship with them forever. But sometimes they allow their mistakes, they allow their, their, their errors, their condemnation, and they allow that to keep them separated from me, and they choose to stay away from me because they don't think, they think that I won't accept them. They think that I've given up on them. When I haven't, I will never give up on you. That's what he was telling him. He was like, if only they knew, I would never give up on them. I would never give up on them. I truly love them. And so that's in that moment, I realized 
God loves us so much that he wants that true genuine relationship with us that authentic relationship when you understand God's love that's when you serve him out of gratitude and you don't serve him out of fear you don't serve him because you're scared to go to hell you serve him because you truly love him you serve him because you don't want to hurt his heart and that's where the true transformation happens you see I'm married I have a wife I don't cheat on my wife I do not cheat on my wife because I'm scared I don't cheat on my wife because I love her because I don't want to hurt her heart and I know that God has given her to me to be my wife you understand so there's a different level there's a different level of love that I've attained to where I don't want to do those things naturally I want to stay away from that it comes from the soul it comes from truly deep within and that's where sin is truly defeated you see sin is truly defeated with the love of God you understand that because when we mention sin we say what is sin we get to mentioning fornication all of these type of things but we don't understand that sin is actually singular it's not plural so all of that fall into the umbrella of sin all of the things that we do is an expression of sin something that is deep within and that can only be defeated by understanding the love of God by accepting the love of God by literally basking in the love of God and once you truly accept the love of God you cease to stop serving God out of fear but true love that you surrender to him that you let go you say God I love you so much that I give my heart to you here is my heart take control of my heart I want you to do whatever you want with me I give you full control I give you full access that when I mess up I do not run away from you but I go to you when I mess up I go straight to you because I know your love I know you accept me I am your child and sin has been defeated when you went upon that cross you've given me victory so I accept your victory does that make sense you have to accept the love of God it's truly real it's the love of God that will transform you. deeper revelation of his love so I want to do something right now I want to pray and I want you guys to join me in that prayer can you all stand up and even everybody online I want you guys to join me in this prayer as well we're gonna pray that we all experience the love of God that we go deeper in the love of God amen amen let me look let me have you guys lift your hands up to the sky it's in the act of surrendering to our Lord Jesus Christ our Savior dear Heavenly Father right now in the mighty name of Jesus I pray Lord Father God that your love come crashing down right now that we are filled with your love right now I pray Lord Father God that the fire of the Holy Spirit takes over and burn all the worries the condemnation that is inside of our soul that is inside of our heart that we let go and that we understand that we are truly your children that you love us so much that you came and you died you gave your life for us so no longer do we serve you out of fear but we serve you out of gratitude we serve you out of true love my lord we surrender ourselves to you we accept you lord we give ourselves away right now i pray for every barrier to be removed every distraction to be removed in the name of jesus every demonic unclean spirit that is trying to take your focus off of jesus right now i cancel it in the mighty name of jesus tonight breakthrough shall happen strongholds will be broken in the mighty name of jesus and we give you praise for deliverance we give you praise for a deeper revelation of your love tonight will be a powerful night as we worship you my lord as we magnify your name as we lift you up on high as we give you all the praise we focus on you everything belongs to you jesus we worship you and the whole church says amen 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 i want you guys to welcome up the worship team give a round of applause for the worship team come on give a round of applause for jesus in the house tonight give a round of applause for jesus in the house tonight This room loves to worship Jesus that wasn't very enthusiastic you would was that enthusiastic who in this house loves to worship Jesus because we're all called to worship Jesus we're not worshipers we just worship Jesus amen 
So tonight, I need you guys to let go of every single thing that you walked in here with. If you did walk in here with anything. I need you to clear your mind so that you can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Because worship doesn't happen with the lips. Worship happens with the heart. So I need you to empty your heart out to the Lord right now so that he can fill you up. So he can fill you up anew, fill you up afresh. So he can fill you up with his wind, with his love. And when you leave this place tonight, you'll be consumed with so much love from Jesus that somebody walking next to you will feel the love of Jesus. Amen? Who's ready to be a walking, loving Jesus person in the street tonight. Thank you. Oh, Father, tonight we want to run to your throne room. We want to run to your throne room and just give everything to you. All the doubt, all the anxiety, all the problems, whatever it is, Lord, we just want to run to the throne room. We want to walk to the throne room. We want to run to your throne room and give it to you. Give it at your feet because you are holy, Lord. And we want to scream that you are holy. You are holy. You are holy, Lord.
lot of people come to church looking for faith. Looking for faith that activates now because you want something right now to happen. But see, the faith of now activates with sound. It requires you to bring forth sound because even the Lord himself, God Almighty himself made the world through sound. He created us through sound and it was done. And so if we're coming to church looking for something but we're being silent, you're not activating your faith. You're just waiting for faith to come to you. But you have to do your part as well. And so the very first thing we do before anything can happen is we need to give reverence to the Lord where our worship. It needs to be an authentic worship so that the very thing that you're looking for, the very person you're looking for can meet you halfway. But you got to do your part and activate the faith of now and open up your mouth, open up your lips to raise a hallelujah to Jesus tonight. Who's ready to raise a hallelujah to Jesus tonight? Who's ready to raise a hallelujah to Jesus tonight? I need this whole room to shake with hallelujah. 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 Keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it. Cause there's breakthrough in your hallelujah. There's freedom in your hallelujah. There's victory in your hallelujah. There's healing in your hallelujah. Poverty goes in your hallelujah. Sickness goes in your hallelujah. Everything that of God goes in your hallelujah. So scream a hallelujah to Jesus. Scream a hallelujah to Jesus. Give him the highest praise. Give him the highest praise. start clapping. You get it? No, no, not like that. Hold on. Throughout the whole song, don't stop clapping. Whatever you do, don't stop clapping. Because that means you're coming into agreement with what the Lord is doing with your clap. So let's start over, Deacon Esmia. Let's start over, Isaac. Come on. Don't stop clapping because I'll stop again. Come on, keep going. Our is a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. Our is a hallelujah. Oh uh -huh. 
reading a book on Catherine Coleman today, flying back from Puerto Rico. And she said something that helped me. It's gonna help a lot of you guys. You know, you wake up in the morning, you start thinking about what you're about to do. How's your day, how your day's gonna go, all the things that you need to do. I need to take care of the kids, I need to take them to school, I need to do this, I need to do that. Then you start thinking about, okay, I gotta do that tomorrow, then I gotta do it again the next day. Then you start thinking about the next week and the next month, and now you all the way into the next year. And she's like, but God is still in the right now with you. I said, don't worry about tomorrow. I'm going to give you all the strength that you need, all the tools that you need for anything that's happening to you right now. I'm right here in this moment. You're all the way in 2025. What you doing in 2025? We haven't even gone to 2024. We haven't even passed 9 a.m. today. So we got to wait on the Lord. Don't be so quick to get there before he gets there he already knows the plans that he has for you and their plans for you to prosper but he needs you to prosper in the right now first you need to meet him right now
it doesn't mean you sit there and worry about how he's gonna do it he's going to do it because he keeps his promises right that's the lyrics that's in the song the lyrics in the song are the word of God so when you speak it it comes alive but you can't worry while you're waiting if you're worrying while you're waiting you're taking it into your own hands because you're focused on your own strength then you can't worry while you wait you focus on God you praise him through it and you just continue to wait in it and, and that's where your strength comes from the words of the joy of the Lord is my strength you do it in joy you wait in joy until he answers those prayers and it talks about we, we get strong we are eagles we soar over the problems we don't sit there and think about it and focus on it we soar over everything they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength they will mount up on eagle uh, 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 mount up like eagles and soar that's what the word says so we're gonna sing that part right now sing it in faith sing it in faith they that they that wait on the Lord shall That's 
get to the throne room and you raise a hallelujah and you give him praise and you're in the presence and you have to wait for whatever it is that you went to the throne room for you have to understand what's what's taking place what what you're doing there there is is something going on there's something special about being in his presence it's something special about waiting on God and the best place to wait for God is in his presence and even better than that is to get used to it. So we can't build blocks of worry and blocks of fear because that keeps his presence out. But when we wait, we wait in his presence and we, we get used to it. Because there's no other place that we could, we could ever be. There's no other place that is better than his presence. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for just being so gracious. Like, it's a blessing and it's an honor to be in his presence when, when we're in our secret place and he come down and you feel his presence among you. It's the, it's the best thing ever. And we just got to get used to it. Thank you, Jesus.
compares to you. Nothing comes close to your love. Nothing comes close to your touch. Nothing comes close to your presence. And all we want is just you, Jesus. All we want is your presence, Jesus, in the midst of of troubles and tribulations and problems and worries, Lord. All we want is just your presence. It's more than enough, Jesus.
glorious, matchless in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. Let's give it up for Jesus. Come on. If you feel the presence of God, I want you to say amen. amen. If you feel the weight of glory, I want you to say hallelujah. I want you to praise the king. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here right now. Hallelujah. Hey. Who's ready to break some chains tonight? Uh, who's ready to break some chains tonight? And the only way we can break chains is by allowing Jesus in our lives. Hallelujah. Surrendering a new area of our life. Hallelujah. That's the only way we can break chains. It's about, it's about, it's about allowing Jesus to enter a new area of our life. Look, when we come to Christ, we believe he's our Lord and Savior, right? But sometimes we want to keep on to certain areas of our life and we don't want him to save that area or be the Lord of that area. But his mercy is endless. You know, in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the word mercy in the Hebrew, it's plural. It's not singular, which means it's mercies. He's merciful. He's so merciful that the word is actually plural. Did you guys know the word sin is singular? Which means one. We've all sinned. But his mercy outweighs. His grace outweighs. any sin you could ever do look he knew we were gonna sin <laughs> he knew it if you try to save yourself you can't receive the salvation from Jesus Christ because you're your own Savior but when we know that Jesus Christ saved us and his mercies are never-ending we can't be guilty hallelujah say I'm not guilty Say, I'm not condemned. Say, I'm free. Say, I'm free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, God is so good. God is so good. You all could be seated in the fire of God. Hallelujah. His fire is here tonight. I feel the, the flames, the heat. Hey, Manny. Manny, can you bring up the podium? Thank you. How many first-timers do we have in the house? Raise your hand. Wow, that's a lot of people. Hallelujah. Who, who came from out of the state? Raise your hand. Where'd y'all come from? Illinois. Illinois. Praise God. Turn the lights. Thank you. Who else came from out of the state? Where'd you come from, brother? Maryland, Maryland in the house. Praise God. Crab cakes. You never had a crab cake in Maryland? Obey crab cakes and Maryland flag. Obey crab Yeah, yeah, that, that, that part. <laughs> Amen. Where are you from? Atlanta? Praise God. Anybody else? 
Shot Town. Hallelujah. We'll be out there soon. Praise God. Anybody else? Ohio. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Welcome, welcome to the Rock, the Remnant Revival Outreach Center where Jesus Christ is our Rock. Amen. Amen. We're a family, man. We're a family. We're a family. We're a family. So my wife and I just got back from the, the, the beautiful island of Puerto Rico with the accent and all, Puerto Rico. Yes. It was, we, went out, we went out there for vacation to relax. And before we went, the Lord told me in prayer that there was going to be a revival. Had nothing planned. I didn't know any ministries out there. Nobody, nobody. We didn't know anybody. Most of my family's back in the States now. We just, I heard the Lord say revival. And my wife was like, no, you sure? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I don't know how this is going to happen. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. So as soon as we got to the airport, we got the rental car. We hopped in the car. Someone chased us down. And the brother said, hey, I seen you on Instagram. I'm like, praise God. He was like, you know, come, come join us, man. Um, I got a studio, a music studio. I got, uh, there's a pastor out here and all this stuff. And I'm like, cool. All right. And I looked at my wife like, I told you. <laughs> and um, we drove an hour and a half from the city. And I told my wife, we got to stay in San Juan. The Lord told me revival in San Juan. If we stay an hour and a half away from San Juan in the mountains, we're going to have to drive every day. She was like, no, 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 it's gonna be, we're going to be consecrated out there because my wife's very prophetic. She wants to be away. But I like, to, I like to be in the scene to go evangelize, right? And, man, every single day we had to drive an hour and a half to San Juan. <laughs> but it was good. We prayed. It was, it, was, it was beautiful. Many encounters, man. We went to the mall. We trained up a, a team out there to evangelize. We went to the, the really bad areas of Puerto Rico. It's called Caserillos. And we went, we went out to the hood. Who's from Puerto Rico? Oh, man, we got some Puerto Ricans in the house. Hallelujah. So there's a place called, was it Monte Tio? Y'all know where that's at? We went there. We went to La Pedla. Y'all know where that's at? We went to La Pedla. It's one of the worst areas, I think, in the Caribbean, if not like the, the world. It's, it's, it's pretty bad, right? Yeah, and um, people don't go down there. You go down there, you don't come out unless you know somebody, especially a certain area, which is called the, a point. It's a point where they, have, where they do drug transactions. Um, February, actually, this year, tourists were down there trying to record. They got stabbed, thrown into the water. They get washed up by the police, and the police don't go ask questions because the community is so tight-knit. They don't, they don't say anything. And it's, it's, it's around a beautiful area. There's a place called El Morro, which is a castle. And when you're walking, it's so beautiful. Old San Juan, it's like, wow. And then you look down, and there's this beautiful community by the beach. Like one way in, one way out. Beautiful. You see the Puerto Rican flag. A basketball court is so nice. It looks like a vacation spot. But you don't go there because that's where La Pela is, the pearl. Um, so we went out there with some locals. By the grace of God, we met some people actually at the, uh, the brother's ministry. We went there. We connected. He actually knew some people I know in America, some music artists. And we went to um, La Pela. And, you know, that, it was cool. We went in there. But then to go to the point. That there's a specific point where there's a lot of drug dealers. Most people don't go, but we went with a local. You can't record nothing. They told us don't record. You know, he walked up to all the people and told us to stay, had to talk to them, and to, to, to ask them if, we, if they would allow prayer. And they were like, yeah, whatever, let, let them come pray. And, man, the Holy Spirit moved, man. I mean, Molly's on, the, like, pills on their lap as they're sitting down with guns, pistols. They're over there getting touched by the Holy Spirit. I mean, they were, they were, they were, man, you know, God, God was, God was moving, man. My wife was in the streets with me. I mean, she was in the, in the hoods and she was praying, casting devils out. I mean, for real, like real deliverance in the streets. The people were, the people were like watching, like, what is this? I need prayer too. Like, Man, revival broke out for real. Uh, there, there, there's a like the, the the they're called in Spanish bichotes, which is like a boss. The bosses out there were getting saved, like in the barrios. It was in the casa. It was crazy. It was crazy. We couldn't get too much footage because they didn't want it. They didn't. They, they wouldn't talk to us if there was a camera. But we still, you know, we they got touched. Amen. Amen. Um, and there's a there's a there's a rapper out there, a famous reggaeton rapper. And I, I don't really know too much about him, but I just know he's, he's really well known. He ended up coming to the revival that we had on, on um, Saturday. He ended up rededicating his life to Christ and getting delivered at the church. His name is uh, Alejandro. He goes by, he goes by um, Almighty. 
He's a rapper. He's, he comes to Orlando, too. He's a really humble dude, man, really loving, really, really humble dude. Man, as I was talking to him, you know, you know, I felt like there was guilt. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, bro, like, you're forgiven, man. Like, you believe in Jesus? You want to keep this walk? Yeah, but you're forgiven, bro. And it just led me to want to just really minister, preach a sermon to you guys today, tonight, about guilt. Y'all ready for that? Because I feel like a lot of people are being deceived, man. Really deceived by the devil with guilt. And really, it's an attack of deception to keep you away from what you're called to do. So tonight, people are going to, are gonna, like I said, chains are going to be broken. As I closed my eyes there and I was worshiping, I seen, I seen a battle axe in the spirit and I seen chains just breaking. That's why I said that. So hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's get into the Bible. If you love your Bible, say amen. 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 All right, we're going to get into this word. All right, all right, all right. All right, so the Rock, the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, we are, we are a soul-winning church. We evangelize, right? You guys know that. We hit the streets. We go evangelize. This past Friday, we were downtown Orlando evangelizing down there. I wasn't, but Pastor Joel, Pastor Benji, they took out the team. They were down there witnessing. It was powerful. Um, we've been doing this for a while, so it's, it's the DNA. Everyone say DNA. DNA. So if you're part of the rock or if you come here, you're going to either receive an impartation of evangelism or you're going to join the ministry and receive an impartation and be trained up. Hallelujah. Because in this last hour, revival is breaking out. And revival means resuscitating those who are dead, right? You can't do that unless there's evangelism. So God is calling everybody, prophet, pastor, apostle, teacher, it doesn't matter. You don't, you don't have to be ordained nothing. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are called to go out and reach the lost. The best pulpit is the streets. That's actually what I was preaching in Puerto Rico to the people because there's so much condemnation in Puerto Rico. They think the fear of the Lord is being scared of God. There's so much religion. You know, they brought a lot of witchcraft and religion on those boats to the island when they took over the, 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 the country through Catholicism, through the witchcraft. So they're so used to Jesus is, I need to be scared of him. I don't have a relationship with him. And church, I can't, I can't even move. They were so stiff. Like, you know, like I was like, come on, hallelujah. You know, I, I did the, the joke I always do. Look, if you got baptized as a baby or, or, or your parents told you to do it and you didn't believe in Jesus or the gospel, you just took a bath with soap and shampoo, right? You see how you guys laughed? There was no laughing. I was waiting like, all right. I was trying, man, because they were, they were stiff. They, they, they didn't know that Jesus in Christ is fun, that we have freedom, you know? Y'all know we have freedom in Christ, right? Yeah. Right, Carlos? We got freedom in Christ, right? I love that dude in the back. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Carlos, man. Hey, he's been with us since the house church, man. He's a powerful man of God. All right, so we are a soul-winning church, and with that being said, the enemy will try to slow us down, and one major weapon is the deception of guilt. The gospel is the good news. Everyone say good news. Good news. It's not the guilty news. We are saved by faith in Jesus Christ for what he did, nothing else. Guilt is an attack of religion. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Conviction is awareness. The beauty of awareness is, is that it is the first step towards growth and change. Meanwhile, condemnation has guilt and punishment attached to it. There is no wiggle room, no space to grow and change. There is only consequences of actions. If you're living your life thinking about what God is going to do to you if you do this, you're living in condemnation. If I'm sitting there like, I don't want to drink this alcohol because I, if I do, I'm going to get a demon. You're in condemnation. You're in religion. If you don't want to fornicate because if I fornicate, I can go to hell. That's religion. Yes. The fear of the Lord is respect and reverence to God. We should not want to do these things because we love God. Because we have a relationship. My wife, I think she's in the restroom. My wife, Pastor Carlene, I don't not commit adultery on her because I'm scared she's going to leave me. 
I don't live my life like that. I don't commit adultery on her with another woman because I love her. You see the difference? I don't come to church because I don't want to go to hell. I come to church to get closer to God because I ain't going to hell. Amen. Amen. Look, hell is real, and I'm not against preaching about hell. I preach, hell is real. I know it's real. It's very real. If you don't believe hell is real, I don't know, you, you should, I don't know how you believe heaven is real. Heaven and hell is real, but once you're saved, you don't, you're not going to hell anymore. You believe. You put your faith in Christ. But in the beginning, it's going to be hard. You don't come to Christ, and you're a perfect Christian. You don't come to Christ, and you know the Bible front and back. You're going to struggle. There has to be struggles. There has to be falls so that you can go to the next level. You can't go higher unless you go low. A righteous man falls seven times and gets back up. A righteous man falls seven times. So if a man never falls, is he righteous? He's prideful because he doesn't think he can fall. You see the difference? Right, Pastor Joel? He had that revelation. He gave it to me. I was like, man, that's a gem right there, boy. Amen. For real. A righteous man has to fall because you got to see what it's like. Man, I didn't see this error in my life. Okay, God, thank you that you've forgiven me. Thank you that your blood washes me. I have faith in you. I know you're Lord. I know you're Savior. I know you died on the cross. You were buried and rose. I turn away right now, transform my mind, get back up, and keep pushing in freedom. Hallelujah. You don't go around thinking, oh, my gosh, I just sinned. I got a demon and I need to get deliverance. I can't do nothing until I get deliverance. I got a whole demon. Bro, that's, that's religion, bro. That's a whole other side of religion. There's a big deliverance movement going on. Yes, casting out devils is real. Hallelujah. Amen. But if we focus on deliverance, 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 that's not a relationship. That's the same, that's the same as a Pharisee who doesn't believe in deliverance. We don't focus on the gifts. The gifts are supposed to be signs that point us to Christ. It's relationship with Jesus. A sign points you somewhere, right? But if all you're seeking is signs, if all you know is signs, you're working for God but not through God. If you don't know that God is working in you and it's no longer you who lives but Christ who lives inside of you, you're going to always live separated. But the blood of Jesus is what, is what actually takes us out of separation and into reconciliation. Literally, do you know that Jesus Christ lives inside of you? It's no longer you who lives. Under the water, you die. And you rise a new creation. And now Christ lives through you. Now he, his destiny, the purpose he has for you that he's already written is now what gets, what gets lived out. And it's your job to partner with the Holy Ghost to fulfill what God's already written about you. Are there consequences to actions? Of course. Right now, if I go commit murder in the streets and I repent and I say, God, and I confess, will God forgive me? Of course. But could I go to prison? Of course. If a single man of God goes and sleeps with a single woman of God before marriage and she gets pregnant and they repent, are they forgiven? They confess they did it. Are they forgiven? Of course. But will there, will there still be a baby if she gets pregnant? Yes, there's consequences. Consequences are not always bad. There's good and bad consequences. And Romans 8, 28 says all things work for the good of those who love God that are called according to his purpose. So he could take what the devil meant for evil and turn it around for good. Amen. That's what our Lord does, bro. He takes, he, he loves it. He takes the, the fumble he, and, he, and he gets the TD. Always. Oh, you fumbled the ball. Let me take that. I got you. Holy Ghost will take it and, and, and score. That's what he does when you think, oh, I can't do nothing. I'm screwed. Oh, you think you are? Come to me. I got you. Ask me. I got you. Let me handle this for you. I promise you, Jesus Christ will always come through. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. This is the Bible. This is the truth. The devil speaks lies. We destroy the lies with truth. Everyone say truth. truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth. Amen. Amen. So with Jesus, when we partner with him by believing what his word says, because he is the word, the Logos word wrapped in flesh. When we believe that, we partner with him. And guess what? When one or two agree, 
Every word is established in heaven. So when you read your word and you come in agreement with the, with the Holy Spirit inspired, inspired the writer to read, there's agreement in the spirit. You see what I'm saying? And things get activated. I was, I was watching a, um, uh, an, an interview or a YouTube channel of a brother. I forgot his name. It popped up. Young, young man of God, brother in Christ, he died and he went to heaven. He's preaching the gospel now. But when he went to heaven, the Lord showed him the partnership and, when, and, and agreeing with the, with the Bible, like agreeing with the word of God and how things get activated and how people don't believe in what the word says and they don't decree it. They don't declare it. They don't, they don't believe it. So when he came back, he was like, man, he had a whole revelation of prayer. And he's expressing that on the Internet. Millions of followers. I was like, man, that's a powerful revelation. I knew it, but just hearing him saying, you know, he, goes, he went to heaven and the Lord told him that was like, wow. Like, you know, powerful, right? But so many people pray without knowing what the word says. If you get into prayer and you're praying your own, your own opinion or your emotion, how can God move? Let his will be done. You know, I hear this too. Oh, I don't know what to do. God, let your will be done. Let me just keep on moving, living my life. Oh, I'm dealing with financial issues. God, let your will be done. Oh, I'm dealing with relationship issues. God, let your will be done. Oh, I'm dealing with this sickness. God, let your will be done. His will is written in his word. He already gave you his will. It's up to you to seek to find. When you find his will that's written, that's when you pray it. You remind him of what he already knows, and then agreement is birthed in the spirit. And that's when things are activated. The double-edged sword, separating bone and marrow, soul and spirit. Listen, the word is alive. Pay attention. Don't come to this church to just watch deliverance, man. This is, this is not a show. Come here to get closer to Christ. Get off your phone. Stop looking around. Pay attention because your life can change right now. I didn't come here to waste my time. I came here to preach that y'all can be changed and I can be changed too. Hallelujah. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Do y'all want some fire tonight? Did you come here to change or stay the same? Where the football at? We got the football? You want to grab it, Pastor? I'm going to start throwing TDs to people to wake up. Now, we got a young church, man. I know a lot of young people, they, 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 the type to fall asleep in class type people. I was one of those too. But we're not going to do that in the church house. I'm going to throw a football at your head. And we got insurance, too. All right. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. We're going to put it on the board or on the projector. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone say everybody. everybody. The Bible says we've all sinned and fell short. Everybody. The Bible says... If you think you're without sin, you're, you're, man in the gold chain in the back, what's your name? Adrian, if you think you're without sin, you're deceived. If I think I'm without sin, I'm deceived. So what does that mean? Someone stand up and talk to me. What does that mean? Who wants to stand up and preach real quick for the 30 seconds? Come on, stand up and preach here. So if, if you think you're without sin, man, you remember when the, the rich young ruler came up to Jesus and he said, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit the eternal life? And Jesus was like, no man is good. Only God is good. The truth is each one of us since Adam and Eve were born into sin because they chose sin over what God told them to do. And from that, it, it turned into a generational curse. Every single person is born into it. It's in our DNA. So really, um, the only good person is God. He's the only one that lived a perfect life, lived a sinless life. And that's actually why we have our salvation is because through his sinless life, he overcame death in the grave because for the wages of sin is death. And um, yeah, so he died for us and overcame that grave so that we can live and have eternal life in him. Amen. That boy can preach. Is she okay? She needs deliverance? You gonna handle it? All right, Pastor, go ahead. Hold on, let's give it up for Jesus. He's about to, he's about to deliver his daughter. Who can catch? All right. I, 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 I was about to throw it to you, too. You ready? Uh, hey, hey, no hands.
hands. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you got hands, man. I hit, I hit the ceiling. That wasn't fair. All right. She's getting delivered. It's okay. Amen. All right. Yeah, the fire of the Holy Ghost is definitely here. The AC's on, but I'm feeling hot. Maybe it's this. No, I don't know. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord, through your sins. Though, I mean, though your sins are like scarlet. Everyone say scarlet. scarlet. They shall be white as snow. Everyone say snow. snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Everyone say wool. wool. Man, this is a messianic prophecy. That means the prophet Isaiah was speaking about what would happen to our sins when the Messiah, Christ Jesus, came and died on the cross and was buried and rose? Hallelujah. Our sins will be blotted out. Our sins will become white like snow, dressed in all white. There's nothing we can do that will take away our salvation as long as we keep following the Lamb. Hallelujah. So, yes, you might have fell into pornography. Yes, you might have fell into gossip. Yes, you probably got angry and cursed that person out on the highway. Hey, you probably dishonored your mother and father. You might have committed adultery. You might have gotten divorced when you shouldn't have. But guess what? Because of your faith in Christ, when you confess your sin, it becomes blotted out and you're dripped out in all white. <laughs> in the spirit. Isn't that amazing? We can't lose. Everyone say, we can't lose. We're going to break religion tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why we should hate sin? Because we love Jesus. Man, I hate sin. I know I'm going to sin, but I hate it. I don't want to sin. Because like I said, I was, tell I was talking to Pastor Benji today at the gym. I was like, sin does create consequences. So what the enemy does is try to get us to fall as much as he, as he can so that there are consequences we have to deal with. And what that does is slow us down. That's all it's doing. He wants to slow us down as much as he can so that we don't fulfill the destiny that he knows we're supposed to actually be shot into. He knows our calling and destiny more than some Christians. That's all he's trying to do is slow us down. If we keep following Jesus, we're going straight to heaven. There's a lot of Christians that are going to make it and be like, man, I didn't do nothing. Do you want to be one of those Christians? You didn't come here and want to be one of those Christians. This ain't the type of ministry that you're going to be one of those Christians. You come here, you're going to be lit up and sent out. Hallelujah. You want to be used, right? Just because you've been, you were, you're, you're newly born again and you don't know the word front and back yet, does, does it mean that you shouldn't talk to people about Jesus? Man, for real though, a lot of people think that, you know, a lot of ministries actually, uh, they preach that. They, um, they believe in that. Like, look, you just got saved. Don't preach to people about Jesus till you've read the New Testament a few times. Give it two or three years, and then you could talk about Jesus. That's not what Jesus says. He says, go, go to every creature. Go to everybody. Go preach the gospel to everybody. Repentance and the remission of sins to all nations. Jesus wants us to preach everywhere we go. At your job, at the grocery store. I, I've preached this message so many times, it's not even funny. Where the football at? Okay, Lord, help me. Come on. One hand, one hand. Let me stop, let me stop. I repent for pride. That was prideful. So, like I said, this football, I can preach to you about evangelism all day. Stand up, you. Yeah? All right, catch it. You see, he caught the message. So let me ask you a question, man of God. If you catch what I preached to you, what does that mean? Exactly. Amen. Go ahead. All right, thank you. So that means he actually caught it, and he's going to use it and go actually do something about it. But if I preach to you and you don't catch the message, the ball just goes past your head. And you go out and you're the same person that you were before you even came in here. Every time you go to a service, you should be changing. That's repentance. Repentance is not always, not always from sin. You can change by reading the word, transforming, renewing your mind. You can change by hearing a message. 
You can change by just worshiping the Lord and God giving you a crazy revelation. You see, that's what we do as Christians. We keep growing. We don't stop. We're like trees. We keep growing and we don't stop. What the devil tries to do is make that water stop, stop, stop coming in, in, on the soil and the, and the fertilizer and the, the nutrients for a week or two so that you don't grow that much. You ever see that tree that's kind of dying a little bit? And then you come back and you water it, give it some nutrients, and it comes right back to life. That's what he tries to do. If he can do that as many times as possible, you're going to get to heaven and be like, man, I didn't do what I was supposed to do fully. You still made it to heaven. There's going to be a Bema seat, a, a Bema seat judgment where it's not going to be off salvation. There's a great white throne judgment, and that's for those who are going to the lake. But there's a Bema seat. Everyone say Bema seat. In the Greek, it's pronounced Bema. And that judgment, the word Bema, it's, like, it's an Olympic judgment. It's, it was in reference to the Olympics in, in, in Greece. And what Paul was trying, to, was trying to let them know was, hey, there is a judgment where you will be rewarded for what you've done here. Everyone say tabernacle. tabernacle. We are all tabernacles, moving, moving temples, groaning, waiting to go to heaven. I can't wait to get to heaven. That's what Paul says. We're all waiting to get to heaven, but while we're here, our job is to, is to advance the kingdom. And somebody, don't say it out loud, stand up and tell me where the kingdom of God is. Somebody stand up and tell me. Who knows where the kingdom of God is? Where is it at, man of God with the glasses? And where is it at? But where is it? In you. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for him. Hallelujah. What's up? Amen. Governs your life. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for that man. Man of God. So if the kingdom of God is within you, the kingdom of God is advanced by doing what? How do we advance the kingdom? If it's inside of me, how do I advance it? On this world, look, this world is corrupt. It's fallen. It's a fallen world. It's going to be destroyed. You guys, you guys know this, right? This world is going to be destroyed with fire. This is not what God intended for us. This world is so corrupt. It's dying. It's a dying world. Beautiful creation. But it's a dying world. Look at all the buildings, every, the pollution, everything the enemy has done. He's, you know what the enemy did? When he came here, he said, I'm going to do what God wanted to do here, and I'm going to do it better. And I'm going to take his creation with me to the lake of fire. That's what he wants to do. You know that, right? So if we know this world is going to burn up, we also know we ain't from this world anymore. We're going to heaven. We're here, but we already made it. So how do we expand the kingdom of God here? The Bible says that we should pray like this, right? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So how does the kingdom of God advance here on earth as it is in heaven? Where is the kingdom of God? Inside of you. So if I want to advance the kingdom of God, I need to go preach the gospel and take the darkness out and fill them with heaven. That's how the kingdom of God is expanded through people. You want to know the will of God? Win souls. Everyone say win souls. Win souls. You want to be recompensed. Y'all know what that means? Taking care of by God? Win souls. God will always take care of his soul win winners. Did you know that? Proverbs 30, right? 1130 says he will recompense you. He will take care of you in every way if you win souls. Everyone say, I want to win souls. You know, God wants us to have a hunger and a thirst to win souls. The same way we had a hunger and thirst for money. Some of y'all in the world love money. Some of y'all in the world love bagging chicks. It wasn't chicks and money that you, were, that you wanted. It was actually souls you, that you were called to win on this earth. You had a desire to win souls, but you didn't know your calling. You didn't know what your gift was supposed to be used for. Some of you were really good at drug dealing. Could make, could sell water to a whale, right? Really good at it. It wasn't drugs that you were supposed to be selling. It was the gospel that you were supposed to be preaching. It's a gift. Why do you think the best soul winners are the ones who came from the streets, who came from a, from a crazy background of this and that? They weren't, look. We all did it, man. We all did some crazy stuff. But guess what? Really, it was us desiring something more that we came from. That's all it was. That's why when someone sins, I don't sit there and be like, oh, you're, you're, you're a pagan. 
you're not worthy. No, I'm like, okay, why are you sinning? You're lacking love. You're lusting because you're lacking love. Because when you're in the presence of God, you gnoskos God. Everyone say gnoskos. That means you know him. And you know that word gnoskos means sexually intimate? Did you know that? You're sexually intimate with God? It's not a sexual thing, but Paul used that word. You know why? To, to teach us that, hey, it's that intimate. When you're in the presence of God, you feel connected. You feel the love and the joy and the peace, the righteousness, right? You feel, you feel that, wow, this is amazing. That's really what people who are lusting are seeking. That's why when you're a man or woman of God and you're walking in the streets in Christ, you see people trying to holler at you more than they did when you were in the world. And you're like, what's going on? It's because you're walking and you're a glory carrier. You're a love carrier. And these people are attracted to you because of the love you carry. So it's your job to present that to them. Not run and be like, oh, they're lusting over me. How dare they? They got a demon in them. Run, run, run. We've all been there and done that. But then when you have the revelation, you go, oh, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. You, you need, okay, come here. Let me talk, tell you about something. Somebody. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me continue. Psalm 32, 5. It says, I acknowledge my sin to you. And I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Everyone say confession. That is a vital step in dealing with guilt. When we acknowledge our sin before God, he is faithful to forgive us and restore our relationship with him. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful to do what? Faithful and just to do what? To wash away what? So do you have to go do something about it? Do you have to to go do a ritual to get forgiven? Do you have to stand on top of your head and and for 30 30 minutes until you get a dent in your head to get forgiven by God? Do you have to go punch yourself in the face in the mirror until you start bleeding? Is that how you get forgiven by God? Because some of y'all do that in the spirit. Some of y'all, you sit there in condemnation and guilt for like three months. What's going on? Y'all fall short. Let me tell you, I've done it. So I'm I'm not better than you. But some of us, let me say us. Everyone say us. us. Yeah, it's not y'all, it's us. We, we all do it. It just sticks on us. Man, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. And we've already confessed to God. Oh, he's gonna, this demon, a demon's coming to enter me. Oh, man. I wonder when the demon's going to come in my, my temple. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I'm going to fall. Oh, my gosh. I'm cursed now. Oh, my gosh. Something's going to happen to me. And you're sitting there believing all the lies of the enemy. When Jesus is saying... Just tell me what you did, and it's washed. He throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. You know what that means? He doesn't remember it. So if I tell you I don't remember something, and I forget it completely, but then I say, I remember your sin, but then I don't remember it. Doesn't that sound confusing? So if God doesn't remember your sin, that means he forgot it. He wiped it away from time in the past. He doesn't remember it. Some of y'all are like, yeah, he does, he does, because he's all, he's all powerful, but he will erase it. The only way that an all-powerful, all-knowing God can forget your sin is if he erases it from the past. So some of y'all stuck on your sin from the past, and God already forgot about it. And you're in condemnation because you're listening to the one who accuses you. The accuser of all brethren, the devil, that's what he wants to do. Oh, remember that sin you did back two months ago? Remember you did that? Remember you did that? Remember you did that? And you're in condemnation because you don't know that Jesus already forgot about your sin. Some of y'all are like, man, this is too good to be true. Is this, is it, is he, is he, is this, is this false teaching? No, this ain't. This is the Bible. Some of y'all are like, really? Yes, he forgot your sin. Yes, he looks at you the same way he looks at Jesus. Did you know he sees you in the lens of his son? Man in the green with, 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 with the black excellence. Did you know that God, the Father, sees you like Jesus Christ? Like literally, you, to him, he sees you as a son. He just told you that a couple of days ago. Look at that. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. And he sees us as, as a son. Like that's amazing. And then we get, we get to do greater works than Jesus did. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know we're called to do greater works than Jesus? How long was Jesus' ministry? Someone stand up and tell me. Don't, don't say it out loud, please. 
Go ahead, come up, woman of God. How long was his ministry? Three years. Now, how many people are here, are here are saved? Raise your hand. How many of you? Keep your hand up if you think you're going to go past three years living. That's why you're going to do greater works. Because you have a lot, more, a lot longer of a time period here on earth to do ministry. But then you're stuck on what you did in 1992. You're stuck on what you did in 2004. Man, forget it. Yes, you did that thing. It might have been really bad. But God is not like that sin is worse. No, he's all sin. He hates it all. He's good. He's righteous. He's holy. He's just. He hates sin, but he erases it because of what Jesus Christ did for you. Everyone say grace. grace. Ooh, that's mercy. That's grace. That's amazing. Let's give it up for Jesus. Come on. Man, I love Jesus. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Everyone say Bible. Bible. Anybody falling asleep? All right, cool. Some of y'all, I mean, I was, I was speaking to a brother today. He said he had, uh, where's he at? He's in the back. He said he had fogginess in his brain when he reads the word. Let me tell you something. If you got fogginess, who, okay, who, who, feel, who, when they read the Bible, they're like, I can't concentrate, and they feel foggy brain, foggy brain. Raise your hand. Can I, can I say one thing first? It's not, it's not a witchcraft spirit on your head. Yes, it's not a demon on your head. Like, you're not going to read the Bible. Everyone say flesh. flesh. It's your flesh. So what do you do if your flesh is trying to prevent you from reading the Bible? You starve the flesh. Oh, you going to stop me from reading this Bible? You ain't eating today. You think I'm playing? You talk to the flesh, you say, you're not going to eat today then. And, you're, and I'm, not, I'm not allowing no food to come in this body until I could read the Bible real clear. Oh, you're not, you're not going to let me read the Bible? I'm going to go run a mile. Oh, you're still not going to allow me to read the Bible? I'm going to speak in tongues for the next 30 minutes. I guarantee you. You do a, just those three things. Go work out, don't eat for a day, and speak in tongues for 30 minutes. I guarantee you that it's going to be real clear. I'm serious. Am I right? Who knows what I'm talking about? If you know, you know. Hallelujah. And if you don't, now you know. If you didn't know, now you know. Amen. Amen. So we got to get out the flesh, man. We got to actually fight. This is not an easy walk. This is not every, now I'm saved. Now everything's easy. No, it's, it's a fight. Pa Paul said it was a fight of faith. He said he fought the good fight. You're going to fight because now you actually know the truth. You're different than the Muslim. You're different than the Buddhist. You're different than the person who's going to the, the sidekick. You're different than the person who thinks they're an atheist when that's impossible. You're, you think you're, you're different than the agnostic. You're different than all those people. You actually know the truth and you've experienced it. You don't think there's going to be a fight? It's called a fight of faith. Now that you're in Christ, there's a fight to keep you away from Christ. It's your relationship with him that increases you and you grow and you grow and you grow. If you abide in him and his words abide in you, anything you ask him, what's going to happen? It's coming. One, a priority shipping overnight in the spirit. I'm so serious. It's what you ask you will receive. When you know, okay, what I'm asking the Lord aligns up with his will. Everyone say God's will. God's will. If your will is God's will, that's when things start moving. If, you're, if, if what you want is what he wants, like Samuel, the prophet Samuel had the mind and the heart of God. If your mind and heart is aligned with God because you've asked him to do that, and you start having the same desire, everyone say desire. desire. The Bible says he wishes that none would perish, but all would come to repentance. So when you have a desire, I want to win souls. You don't think he's going to provide everything you need to do it quickly because we're in the last hour. Right now, anyone who steps up to the plate, they get in the shop. Home runs all day. The harvest is ready. He wants us out there winning souls. I don't care what you want to be. I want to be the prophet of this prophet. No, forget it. You're prophetic. Right now in this last hour, if you're not prophetic, I don't know what world you live in. The spirit is poured upon all flesh. Somebody want, some people want to be the, the pastor of the church. Look, go pastor in the streets, some homeless people. 
Some of y'all want to be a teacher. Amen. You want to teach the word of God. Okay. Why not take the Bible and go teach your wife or husband? Bro, God is seeing how, how hungry are you? And if you're hungry, you're going to go do it. I'm going to go do it. You don't need to be here on a microphone. This, man, the streets is the best. The, the, the marketplace. Everyone say marketplace. marketplace. You with the hair, blonde, not with the nice hair. Yeah, yes, you. Stand up. Let's give it up for the brother standing up. What do you do every day? You wake up at what time? I hope it's early, man. What time are you waking up at? Eight. Late. Ah. Okay. How old are you? 19 years old. What time do you wake up at? I hope it's not two in the afternoon, bro. Okay, what time do you wake up today? I want, what's your name? What's your name? Jaden, give me a, uh, a quick recap of your day on Mondays. What do you do on Mondays? Quickly, quickly, come on, come on. Wake up, turn your PS5. Okay, so you turn on your PS5, and you playing what? Call of Duty, what are you playing? Need for Speed, okay. Do you play live? So you got other people on there? Do you preach the gospel to them? Why? I, I'm not going to sit here and say, don't play video games. That's demonic. No, you want to play video games, play video games. But are you playing video games onto the glory of God? Are you getting excited? I'm about to hop on this thing and preach the gospel. I'm going to pray for somebody who's sick on here. Bro, you can cast out demons with the headset on while you're playing, winning, first place. Hallelujah. They get delivered. This is real. I, you know why I'm saying this? Because, number one, I've done it. And I've seen it many times. I know people who have a whole ministry with video games, and they're winning souls. Okay, you play video games. Then what else do you do? Huh? You make beats. Are you making it onto the glory of God? Are you making it for the world? You see, so when you say, God, I, when, you, when your heart is, God, I want to make beats so I can win souls. Not for money, not for fame. But if you do it, because God, I really want to, God... And your heart, your mind is truly for God. You know what he's going to start doing? Christian artists will start coming to you. Your, mo your mom told you that. Bro, I'm telling you. It's Thank you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> you see, people think evangelism is, I got to go out with my church on, on Friday, and that's it. That Right, Deacon Carlos? Right, Deacon Lewis? Right? They think, oh, I got to go on Friday, and if I don't do that, then I'm not evangelizing for the week. What? That's when you're supposed to learn to get a little bit better for the week. But you're supposed to be like, I'm going to evangelize at my job tomorrow. Hey, the lady at the desk, three desks down, is about to get touched with the Holy Ghost. And you'll be in your, your, your little cubicle. When she's in the bathroom, go anointed with oil. I'm crazy like that. I'm dead serious. You think I'm, pro I'm dead serious. I will strategize and get excited to win her to Christ. And she coming to Christ. That type of mentality is how you win souls. That's when you start becoming creative. Everyone say creative. creative. Everyone say strategic. strategic. But if you're stuck in guilt at your desk, I can't do this, man. I got to go to the altar on Saturday and, and get delivered and, and go get baptized again because, man, I just watched porn last night. I'm never going to make. You just got finessed by the devil. And you're going to listen to a whole lie for the entire week. Now you're back to the weed, hitting your ex back up. Man, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do me for the rest of the week and go back to church on Saturday and I'll be all right. If that's your mentality, you already are lost. Everyone say deceived. deceived. Say tonight, tonight we, rebuke we rebuke the devil and come out of agreement, out of agreement. With, deception. with deception. Say I'm not guilty, I'm not guilty. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. All right, let's give it up for Jesus again. Come on, stand up and give it, give it up. I'm going to hit somebody in the head. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody catch it. Oh, hey, no hands. Hallelujah. Hey, throw that way. Hey, throw it around. Throw it around like a party. Throw it that way. Hey, somebody catch it. Whoa, he got hands. Throw it that way. Hey, wake up. Hey, hey. Hey, hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. We're getting lit. We're getting too lit. Hey, we, hey Pastor Joel, write this down. We're going to get a beach ball, three beach balls. So we go, bop. Amen. Go ahead. Stretch. Everyone go. Ah. Oh, shoot. Stretch. All right. Put your hands up. Do one jumping jack. Ready? Don't hit the person next to you, though. Okay. Who needs healing? Anybody? 
All right. All right, sit down, sit down. Hallelujah. Uh, all right, Psalm 103, verse 12. Okay, as far as the east, everyone say east. east. It's from the west. Everyone say west. west. So far does he remove our transgressions from us. Look, all right, this is good. This is a good revelation. Some of y'all going to be like, ooh. The North Pole and the South Pole, they're both points, right? Right? Is that a fact? The North Pole is a point. The South Pole is a point. If I go from the south to the north, I'm going to end up at a point, right? And then when I go down, I'm going south, right? But from the east to the west, it's never ending. There's no east or west pole. Why do you think the tabernacle that was built by God, the altar was faced on the east? East to west is no end. Just think about it. If I start going east, is there ever a time where I'm going west? I'm continuously going east. So from the east to the west, that means never ending. Our sins, he forgets it. Never, it's, it's gone forever. So when you confess your sin, Dixon, when you confess your sin, Jay, Carlos, when you confess your sin, guess what he does? He forgets it. He doesn't say, you know what? They sinned. Now I'm about to send 10 demons on him until he, till, till, till he cries. And his, that's not how Jesus works. He, he forgets your sins. Some people use the verse, he chastens those he loves. Do you know what chastening means? It means it's, you get put through a trial. Y'all know what a trial is? A trial is something, or a trial is, 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 is you being tested. Everyone say trials are good. Why do you think the Bible says rejoice when you go through various trials? Because you're about to level up in the spirit. You know when the devil attacks you the most? When you're about to catch a breakthrough. How do I know this? Because the Bible says it. Daniel. What happened with Daniel? Daniel was fasting and praying for how many days? 21 days. Because he was waiting for his prayer to be answered. And what happened, somebody? What happened? Why was Daniel waiting for 21 days? What does the Bible say was going on? Come on, Carlos, stand up and say it. What, what, what happened? Loud. Huh? The what? No, I said, I said loud, loud. Fasting? Yes? Yep. Yes, the Prince of Persia. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. he, it says the Bible says he almost died, like he was weak. He fell down. Yeah. No, no, that's, that's, that is what happened. And he, said, and he said pretty much I was fighting the prince of Persia and I had to call upon the archangel to come help me. Yeah. That, yeah, he got, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, and he was good to go. Amen. Let's give it up for Carlos. Amen. So y'all heard that? He prayed. God heard his prayer and sent the angel. But he had to wait 21 days. This was an 80-year-old prophet. He was old. He was in his 80s. Only eating vegetables and fruits probably. A Daniel fast. You ever heard about Daniel fast? And he was waiting. This man was like dying, old 80-year-old man dying. I need to eat. He was waiting in faith. And then the angel came like, man, I was fighting the prince of Persia, the principality over this region. I had to call upon the archangel to come help me. But thank God you didn't give up. And then his prayer got answered. So some of you are, are like, man, why is nothing getting answered? What's going on? Bro, God already answered it. He's sending, he's sending, he's sending the, the angelic operation. Everyone see angelic operation. Amen. To minister to you and fulfill what you prayed for. But guess what? Guess what? The devil sees it too. So if I'm the devil, if I'm a demon and I see 
angels coming down, and my, my boys are fighting the, the, these angels and losing, what am I going to try to do? The foot soldiers get sent. And then you go through you go through tribulation. Things just start, how many people go through that? One day everything just starts going wrong. You're like, what is going on? And then out of nowhere, the next day, blessings. Who's been through that? That's what happened. That's what happened. There's a war going on. All you're fighting for is faith. Everyone say faith. faith. It's the fight of faith. Angels are working for you on your behalf. They're ministering. They're ministering spirits. For those who are to inherit salvation, which is us, they're fighting these demons. We don't have to sit there and try to go against demons. No, we let the angels do it. Amen. Amen. And we go cast demons out of our brothers and sisters. We focus on our brothers and sisters in the physical, and they're focusing on each other in the spiritual. Angels are doing essentially almost the same thing we're doing, which is serving God. I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm, asking, I'm, 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 I'm just going to say it. Angels don't know everything. Angels are not all-knowing. All only God is. So think about that. So they're learning while serving us in the spirit realm. They don't know everything. The Bible says they look at us in awe. If they knew everything, they wouldn't be in awe. You see, I, this is common sense. They're not, they don't know everything. They're looking at us like, look at them, worship. They don't even, they don't even, like, I know God is real. Like, I was created to know like, I'm in the spirit realm. They're over there worshiping God, serving God, and they have never even seen him. They're in awe. That's why we're going to judge the angels. Amen. Amen. So they're fighting in the spirit, and we're fighting in the physical. But guess what? We also have access to the spiritual, just like the angels have access to the physical. How do you not know that you're not entertaining an angel? Am I right or wrong? So we can entertain an angel in physical form, good and bad. Just like there's humans who can access the spirit realm, good and bad. You see what I'm saying? This is a war. This ain't no baby sitting in the pew Christianity. We in a fight. And we're fighting for souls. They're ministering those who are to inherit salvation. We're doing the same thing. We're ministering to our brothers and sisters who are supposed to inherit salvation. You know, the, you know Haggai the prophet? Ah, this is, this is a deep teaching. I'm not going to teach right now. Next time, next time, next time. Give it up for Jesus. Come on. I'm going to stick to the plan. We'll talk about angels soon. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. With our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Through faith in Jesus, we can approach God with confidence, knowing that our guilty conscience has been, has been cleansed and made pure. Everyone say confidence. So if you go before God in pity, you're wrong. And you need to repent. The Bible says come before the throne of grace with what? Does it say come like I'm so sorry? <laughs> like he's about to like beat you up or something? No, it says, confess your sins. Well, how did Jesus, Jesus said, forgive my, my trespasses as, 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 as I forgive those who trespass against me. Okay, clean it up. Good. God does not want you focusing on your sin. Wash it. Jesus Christ died on the cross for that same sin you already committed. He did it over 2,000 years ago. It's already on the cross. Jesus became sin for us and was sacrificed. It's done. Everyone say it's finished. It's finished. So we confess it, get over it. Now we come before his throne room of grace with boldness and say, God, I'm ready. I need this, this, and this. My brother needs to be saved. My mother needs to be saved. My co okay. You see what I'm saying? Now you're praying the will of God with confidence. That's called faith. Not double-minded, unstable in all your ways. God, I don't know if you forgive me, and I hope that you can save my mom if that's your will. It is his will. And why are you focused on that sin? He doesn't want you coming before him in pity because that's doubt. Everyone say doubt. And you can't be double-minded with God. He wants full-on faith. He wants you to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He wants you to believe that you can come boldly and confident in anything you ask, you'll receive. It's the faith of a mustard seed, man. Do y'all understand that? We can have little faith, but we have a huge God. He's not asking you to have the most faith in the world. He's saying, just have a mustard seed and I'll handle it. And faith is a substance. Everyone say substance. 
Everyone say, I'm not guilty. All right, we're almost done with the scriptures. If you want me to keep going, say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. Guilt can lead us into two different directions. If we respond with godly grief and true repentance, it leads to salvation and transformation. However, worldly grief or guilt, which is characterized by great despair, leads to spiritual death. Godly grief prompts us to turn to God, while worldly grief keeps us trapped in guilt. Hallelujah. Last scripture, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. This is a prophecy about the dying Messiah. I'm almost done. Stay with me. Everyone say amen. amen. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It pleased the father. It pleased the father that Jesus Christ was bruised, that he was beat. Did you know that? It pleased the father that Jesus Christ went through what he went through. Because it meant that now his children could come to heaven with him. Everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now I'm going to give you one last revelation. This is deep. In ancient times, one of the sacrifices offered in the temple was called the asham. Everyone say asham. The asham was the guilt offering. It removed the guilt of the one who offered it up. So asham means the guilt offering. Everyone say guilt offering. But it also has another meaning. Asham also means the guilt. So the guilt offering and the guilt seems kind of contradictory, but they go together. The guilt offering could only take away the guilt of the one offering it by first becoming guilt. So Isaiah's prophecy describes the Messiah as wounded, pierced, and crushed for our sins. But in the Hebrew, it goes further. It says that his life would actually become an asham. Asham is the exact word used in the book of Leviticus for the animal sacrifices offered up by the priests to redeem the guilty. But here it's actually used to speak not of a sacrificial animal, but of a human life. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, is the asham. Everyone say asham. That means not only does he die to take away our guilt, he actually becomes the guilt itself. So when you see him on the cross, you're seeing the asham, the sacrifice, but also the guilt itself. Your guilt was nailed to the cross. And if the Messiah is the asham and the asham is the guilt, then if the asham dies, so too your guilt has died and all your shame and all your regrets. They've all died and are gone completely and forever. It's finished in the asham. Hallelujah. It's over. All our regret, all our guilt, all our shame, everything you've done. Everyone say, Sakawo. Hallelujah. It's done, man. How amazing is that? Why do you think Jesus said, it's finished? It's over. He said it's finished because he knew he was the asham. He was all our guilt nailed to the cross. So every single time that you begin to feel guilty, you know that it's not normal. And what you do is you take that guilt and you start to pray and you put that guilt on the cross and you see it sacrificed and know it's gone. I'm not guilty. And if someone comes to accuse you of what you've done in the past after you've already confessed and repented, what you tell them is, I'm not guilty. Everyone say, I'm not guilty. If you know you're not guilty, say, I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. You're not. It's over. You're, 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 you're let free. Yeah, you've sinned. You deserve to go to prison. Like you steal something. You deserve to go to prison. But Jesus came. He said, look, to the judge, they did mess up. It's true. But they already let me know. Blood, stamp, sealed. You're good. You're not guilty. Go. That <laughs> All we do is keep winning, bro. In Christianity... As soldiers, we just keep winning. I don't care if you've been saved for a month. You're still winning. You've been saved for 20 years. You're still winning. We just keep winning and winning and winning. Everyone say the school of the spirit. What happens is, is when, you're in, when you're in fifth grade, if you start to look at the kindergartner, and you start to look down on them, what's that called? Pride. 
Pride is when you look down on others without looking at yourself. They're not guilty just like you're not guilty. They're newer in the faith than you are. They got to grow. You know what your job is to sacrificially love them and build them up so they can get to the same level as you. You want to push them above you. That's what we do as Christians. I see my brother down, pick him up. See my sister down, pick him up. Now y'all pick me up. That's what we do. It's a chain reaction. Unity is what brings souls into the body of Christ. And that's how the devil keeps losing. Everyone say the devil's going to lose. Say the devil's kingdom is getting stomped on by my feet. Hallelujah. We stomp on the devil. We keep winning because Jesus Christ died on the cross. We already got the victory, but if you don't know the victory you got, you're going to be guilty, condemned, and never used. And you know, you know what guiltiness leads to? You leaving the faith and not wanting to be a Christian because you think you're not worthy. People who get church hurt, you know, what, you know what that is? They don't have a revelation of Jesus Christ. They don't know what he did for them. They weren't in relationship with Jesus. They were in relationship with their church. Your pastor hurts you, and you get, I don't want to be a Christian. You weren't in relationship with Jesus. You were in relationship with your pastor. Your wife or your husband hurts you, and now you don't want to be a Christian. God, how dare you? You are, doing, you are serving God for your wife or your husband. You weren't serving God because he is your husband. You see what I'm saying? It's different. When you're a dead Christian and you know what Jesus did for you, and you know this life means nothing, and you're going to die, and you're going to heaven, and you're not going to hell, you're going to use this life to glorify the king because there is eternal rewards in heaven, and you love him. It's a win, win, win. We just keep winning. We're saved. Now we're going to win some more. Did you know the Lord has mansions prepared for you? Mansions with an S. <laughs> what we see on this earth, you know what it is? Perversion of heaven. Did you know that? Did you know that when you get to heaven, there's going to be buildings? Satan took what he saw in heaven, brought it here to earth, and tried to replicate it in his own way. You didn't, you didn't know that? Heaven is beautiful. Literal mansions. The best mansion on South Beach has nothing compared to the mansion you're going to have in heaven. It's a real place. It's not a dimension. It's not a realm. It's a place. You see how you walk this earth? You see how you see me right now? In heaven, it's going to be like that on steroids. We're going to have even more senses. We're going to communicate even more. There's going to be, but just imagine, there's no more evil. That's what God intended in the garden. <laughs> there was no evil in the garden. All there was was good. And God said you can eat from all the trees, Adam and Eve. You got free will. But don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Satan said, you can become like God and eat from that tree. How can you know what evil is if you never experienced it? How could you know what hot is if you've never felt something hot, right? So what did Eve do? I want to know what it is to feel something hot. What's evil? What does that feel like? What's that? Everything's good. Heaven was on earth. You know, they had desires. You know they were in a body, right? And they had desires, but the only difference is their desires were fulfilled by the relationship they had with God because they were one with him, the Holy Spirit. So when they decided, Adam and Eve, I want to know what this evil thing is. God knows what it is. I want to be like him. It's probably something amazing because all this is amazing. And they decided to eat. And once they did, and they understood what evil is, guess what happened? The wages of one sin is death. And now there was an expiration date on their body. Now death was allowed into the world. Woo! The spirit of death. The angel of death. And now they have an expiration date in their body because they wanted to be like God. Let me tell you something. None of us could be sinless without God's help. Amen. So even in the garden, they needed God's help. God took away evil from them even understanding it. They didn't even understand what it was. And then when they, sin when they sinned, they allowed it in. Now they did know what good and evil is. But then they realized, oh my goodness, I can't do what God does. 
He knows what good and evil is, and he's still good. He knows what good and evil is, and he still doesn't sin. I can't do what he does. And now death was allowed into the world. And what happened? Curse after curse for everybody that's born into this earth, where literally we know God in heaven. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah says he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. So in heaven we came from him as spirits, and, he, and we knew him. Everyone say knew. The Bible says he would say, I never knew you, right? So knew you means relationship, right? So if we knew him, we had a relationship with the Father in heaven before we even came to earth. And then we came to earth and we were separated from God in these human vessels. And then we grow wanting something. I'm missing something in my life. Will the traveling one day do it? And what do the, the schools and TV and social media do? Go to this island. Go to this country one day. When it's all filters and buffoonery. And people get finessed. Now they have a desire. If I can go to this island, oh, now what do I need to do? I need to get money. I need to go get a job. I need to steal. I need to go sell drugs. You see what I'm saying? The devil will say, no, 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 you don't desire God. You desire this. Look at this. Look at the sex. Look at the alcohol. Look, this will make you feel good. Look at the beautiful clubs with all the lights. Look at the marijuana. Your friends smoke it. It feels so amazing. Look, you don't remember the past. And all he's trying to do is keep you away from the one you truly desire. And God knew. Go ahead, Satan. Put all that in the way. They're still going to desire me. And the ones who truly want to find me, they'll ask. And I'll reveal myself. And even the ones who don't ask, he still, he still, the Father still draws them on to the Son. Still sends people to preach still sends people to pray for them. Even when they don't even know him, he loves them. He loved all of us before we knew him. But Jesus Christ came into a human vessel. God came into a human vessel because he knew because we sinned, there had to be an atonement for that sin. That means a cancellation of that debt. There had to be the blood of a human sacrifice that was perfect. None of us can do it. And he knew I'm the only one that can do it. So God came into a human vessel and lived the same life that we have been living, that our relatives who passed away already lived, but never sinned. And at 30 years old, he started his ministry. Everyone say ministry. Which means service onto the Father who is him. Because him and the Father were one, right? And the Holy Spirit. Three in one. Just like you have a soul, spirit, and body, but you're one. You're a triune vessel. God is a triune God. He's three. He reveals himself in three different ways, but he's one God. Hallelujah. So the son, which is the fullness of God bodily, Jesus Christ is the physical revelation of God. You want to know what God looks like in the physical? Look at Jesus Christ. You want to know how he would be if he walked this earth? Look at Jesus Christ. You want to know how he would speak? His emotions. Look at Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is God. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ lived, lived at 30 years old, got baptized, started his ministry, went from city to city. Everyone say supernatural. supernatural. Operating in a supernatural power that nobody had seen for so, ever, ever. They couldn't understand. Supernatural means operating out of the natural realm. If I see somebody pray for somebody and they miraculously get healed without medication and herbs, that's supernatural. Where did that come from? How did he do that? How did Jesus Christ cast demons out? How did he heal the sick? People were looking and they, were, they followed him because of the anointing, the power he had. He would go on top of the mountain and just wait and the multitudes would be drawn on to him and he would preach. And he wouldn't tell them, you're going to hell, you wicked sinners. 
He would preach to them about the kingdom. He would preach to them the Beatitudes. He would preach to them how the kingdom is so that they had something to look forward to. And then he would continue on. Raising the dead. The blind would hear. The deaf, I mean the blind would see. The deaf would hear. People with leprosy would be healed. On the Sabbath day, we are not supposed to do nothing but follow these rules. He said, I am the Sabbath. I am the rest. I'm going to heal the sick. He looked at the Pharisees and said, you're accusing me? So what if one of your sheep that make you that money fell into a ditch? Would you not save that sheep that's going to put a debt in your pockets? How much more should you help a human who's sick? Because they were all about works and they were about religion. Everyone say, we hate religion. So Jesus Christ came to do all that and fulfill all the Old Testament, the most the Messianic prophecies. What the Old Testament prophets would speak about the Messiah to come who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. These prophets would speak. They would speak. The Holy Spirit would speak through them. Sometimes they wouldn't even know what they were saying. They would just speak what the Holy Spirit was telling them to speak. They didn't even have a full revelation of what was going to happen. But Jesus came and fulfilled every single prophetic declaration. That means if I prophesy, I speak about what's going to happen in the future because God told me and it comes to pass. Amen. Amen. Those prophets said what he was going to do. And he did it for three years. And then you know what happened? He went on the cross. After he was beat, I mean, he got a crown of thorns put in his head. Some of y'all couldn't even bear that. Some of y'all would pass out from that alone. He went through that. He was whipped with a nine tails whip. One of those whips, some of y'all would back out and be like, I'm not doing this. Over a hundred stitches for just one whip. He went through all that for us. Carried a cross. Went on it. Got nailed. And once he died, he said, it's finished because you know why? You know why before he died, he said it's finished? Because he knew now I'm, I'm about to die. It's over. Cool. Now I beat everybody. I beat the world. I beat the, I beat the devil. I beat, I beat the flesh. I beat everything. Now I have, I have full access because I came to this earth. I lived in a human vessel and I was perfect. The second Adam. The first Adam brought death. The second Adam brought life. He said, look, now I came and did what needed to be done. Now if anyone puts their faith in me, right? He did it for us. He took on our sin on his back, was put on the cross, died, was buried on the third day, rose again to prove that he's God even more. Look, I'm back. I walked on water, turned water into wine, casted out demons, healed the sick, did all these miracles. And guess what? I rose from the dead too. Jesus had to pray for, Abraham, for, for Lazarus on the fourth day. He had to pray for him. Nobody prayed for Jesus. He just rose because he had power over death, sin, everything. He rose. He won. Everyone say he won. He played the game of life and won. Simple. He came, played the same game we're playing of life, and he won. Perfect love, amazingness. And now all we have to do is believe in what he did. If we say, Jesus, I believe that you are Lord, that means you're master, you're my king. I submit to you. You're my king. I'm going to follow your ways. I'm going to follow you. You're my savior because of the blood that you shed washes all my sins. You, were, you died on that cross. You were buried and you rose. If you believe that and you repent of every other belief that you might have in your, in your head and you turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you. I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm wicked. I'm wretched. I'm messed up. I keep smoking. I keep drinking. I keep doing this. I don't want to do it anymore. I need you. And guess what he does? If you believe in what he did, he will fill you with the Holy Spirit. He will fill you with the comforter. He will fill you with the spirit of truth, the teacher. He will fill you with power to be able to overcome sin and death. And now when you receive the Holy Ghost, you're born again. Everyone say born again. And now you are going to heaven. And on your walk, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall. But every single time you say, Jesus, you died for that sin I just did. I love you so much. And you keep walking. That's what he wants you to do. He loves you more than you love him. He loved you before you even knew him. So, tonight there are people in here who have not been in relationship with God. You've been, you've been apart from him. You might have been raised in religion where you thought it was works that saved you. You thought if you came to church and you just kept being faithful with that, that you would be saved. But now you're realizing 
It's not about works. It's about relationship. Everyone say relationship. relationship. Some of you have actually been in relationship with God, but like the prodigal son, you strayed away. And you went to the worldly things that the devil provides. And you realize that those desires that you had for the worldly things aren't really, aren't really satisfying. And you want to come back to Jesus like the prodigal. Amen. So what I want to do right now, everyone close their eyes real quick. I'm going to pray. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would touch and convict everybody here. You would touch them and that you would put it on their heart if they need to give their life to Christ. Keep your eyes closed. If you want to give your life to Christ tonight, I want you to raise your hand high. High, 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 high. Raise your hand up. If you want to give your life back to Christ and surrender. Now, on the count of three, I want you to open up your eyes, all of you, and I want you to come run to the altar. One, two, three. Come on up. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus. Come on up. Come on up. And where's the other camera at? And if you're on live, where's the camera at? Where's the camera at? La camera. Where's the roaming camera? If you want to give your life to Christ and you're online, I want you to put a one in the chat. Put a one. Everyone say hallelujah. Wow, that's a lot of souls being saved tonight. Woo. I come back to this. Hallelujah. This excites me. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I want to give it up to all the leadership, the worship team, the productions, everybody. You know why? Because all of us work together to, for this to happen. It's not me alone. I'm just the mascot. Amen. So all of us are going to eat off of this in heaven. Rewards. Everyone say rewards. But not from this earth. Incorruptible in heaven. All right. So all you out the front, look at me. You know, what's, you know what's so different right now? All of you are actually looking at me. And when you guys came up, you were looking at me. Usually people come up here and they have their head down like this. And I tell them, put your head up. Look at me. This is not a moment where you should feel guilty or condemned. You should be happy. And just because I preach that message, the spirit of adoption is in the, in the room, in the atmosphere. So y'all don't feel guilty. Because y'all shouldn't. Right now, all your sins are going to be washed. Everything you did, cool. Now you have a testimony. And now you give that testimony to others who are in the same mess that you were in so you can bring them out and bring them to heaven so we can advance the kingdom. Amen. I got one question. Are all of you that are lined up going to evangelize? All of you, raise your hand if you're going to evangelize at the front. Hallelujah. That's a lot of evangelists. I want y'all to repeat after me. Y'all ready? It's very simple. Say, Jesus, I believe your good news. That if I believe that you died on the cross, that you were buried, and you rose on the third day. And I turn away from my worldly ways, from my worldly beliefs, and turn to you. You forgive me. I confess all my sins, and they're washed by your blood. You are my Savior. You are my King, my Lord, my Master. Say, fill me with your spirit. So I can have the power to walk this walk out. Say, change the desires of my heart. Make me different. I can't do it. Only you can. I partner with you to do this walk on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give it up for Jesus. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will fill all of you at the front. Some of y'all might begin to speak in a new language. I did that. I was, I was preaching on it in Puerto Rico yesterday with a translator. It was interesting. But, man, they came up hungry, and so many people got baptized in the Holy Spirit. People that were in religion got baptized in the Holy Ghost, began speaking in tongues, getting delivered. It was wild. It was amazing. I didn't have to touch nobody. It was simple. Just hunger, faith, thirsting for, for Jesus. And they came up and they, the Holy Spirit had his way.
He's the one that does it. So as I pray, some of you might begin to utter a tongue, an unintelligible utterance. It doesn't make any sense because you feel it deep within your stomach and you want to release it. Don't hold it back. Release it. That is your prayer language. The Bible says it's the tongue of angels. Very important. This gift is when the Holy Spirit prays through you for you. God intercedes for you and prays for you the things that you cannot know in your own mind. How amazing is that? It's a gift. Everyone say gift. In the front, if you want that gift, raise your hand. Keep your hand up if you're going to move in faith. All right, put your hands down. Let me ask you a question. Did anything possess you to come up here and give your life to Christ? Possess you, like make you do it without your control. Okay, did anything possess you to come up here? You did it in your own free will. It's called faith, right? So nothing made you come up here, oh, I got to come. You came up here in faith, free will. So you're saved by? Through faith. And you heal the sick by? You cast out demons by? So you speak in tongues by? Hallelujah. Amen. Because some people think that I just need to wait and the Holy Spirit is going to take over my body and I'm going I'm to black out. No, that's not self-control, which is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. Am I wrong or right? So God gives you control. Amen. So I'll leave the front. I'm going to pray and I'm going to begin to speak in tongues. And if you feel it and you got faith, and you open up your mouth with the faith of a mustard seed. I promise you the Holy Spirit will take over you. And you will begin to know that you and the Holy Spirit are working together to pray in the Holy Ghost. And if you got that type of faith, I guarantee you, in no time you'll be healing the sick and casting out demons too. Because that's the only way. You can't please God unless you got faith. I got faith. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? So I want everyone to close their eyes, relax, put your hands down. Don't look at me. I am not God. I am just somebody on the microphone. Focus on Jesus and the spirit. So I pray right now, Holy Ghost, that you would fill every vessel at the front they've surrendered. You know the ones who have truly believed in their heart and have confessed from their mouth. According to Romans 10, 9, you know the ones. I pray right now, Holy Ghost, that you would baptize them in your power so that they could be witnesses all across America and the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you fill them, fill them, fill them. There you go, man of God. Keep going. Reba kaye, remasia, robo kete kerebese, remandi alabaso korebe kete. I'm not even gonna touch anybody. Let the Holy Ghost have His way. We're gonna pray. For, we're gonna pray for everyone at the altar in a second. Reba kasore. I want them to honor the Holy Spirit in faith. Kasa karebese. Holy Spirit, fill. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Hey, pray in the Holy Ghost. Say, open up that mouth, man of God, woman of God. I see people getting baptized in the power. I see people being activated. Don't, don't be nervous. Don't overthink it. Just open up your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't care about nobody. Don't care about what you look like and sound like. Yes, shaka rebe se. Rekete ke rebe se. Romondi alabaso. Baki alabaso. Hey, rabasore. There you go, man of God. Keep going. That's tongues right there. There you go, woman of God. Hey, shaka rabaso. There you go, woman of God. You got it. Kose. And if anybody in the crowd doesn't speak in tongues, Stand up. You heard the message. Stand up in faith and pray in the Holy Ghost right where you're at. I don't got to touch you. I'm not God. I'm just a man of God after his heart. And you are too. Open up your mouth and pray. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. Have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. Your way, have your way. Your way, Holy Ghost, have your way. Your way, Holy Ghost, have your way. 
your way, Holy Ghost, have your way. Baptize them in your power. Fill them up right now. Baptize them in your power. And fill them up right now. Baptize them in the power. And fill them up right now. Fill them up right now. Fill them up right now. I said, baptize them in your power. And fill them up right now. Baptize them in your power. And fill them up right now. Baptize them in your power. And fill them up right now. Fill them up right now. Have your way, Holy Ghost, have your way, Holy Ghost, have your way, your way, yeah, yeah, have your way, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, have your way, way, Holy Ghost, have your way, right now, have your way, hallelujah, let's give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 So everyone at the front, I'm going to say this. If you got baptized as a baby, that's not true baptism. The Bible says there's one baptism. And there's one baptism when you accept Jesus Christ and you repent and you know the gospel. If someone forced you to get baptized because you thought that's what saves you, that is not what saves you. It is faith. In Christ and what he did so if you're in the front or even in the crowd and you need to get water baptized I want you to raise your hand right now raise your hand and go get baptized right now come on Deacon Carlos got his hand up go get baptized have your way have your way Holy Ghost have your way have your way Holy Ghost have your way Go get baptized right now. Have your way. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. <laughs> That's a lot of souls, man. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Fill them up right now. Right now, right now, hey! All right, if you guys can sit down real quick and then Deacon Carlos, or who is it? He's gonna come, uh, come up and give a message. Oh, Deacon Kevin, I'm sorry. Amen. Y'all give it up for Deacon Kevin, come on. Give it up for Deacon Kevin, come on, man. Leader of Productions. Check, check. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, the presence of God up here is strong. Who's ready to give tonight? That ain't sound too pleasing. <laughs> I'm going to ask one more time. Who's ready to give to the Lord tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Um, so everyone say giving is the key to prosperity. Say it one more time. Say giving is the key to prosperity. So a lot of baby Christians come to Christ, and when they hear the term giving, the first thing they think of is pastors stealing their money. Oh, I'm not going to give to this church. I'm not going to give to them because the pastor's going to use the money for this, use the money for that, this, down the third. And I'm going to be real. There, there are pastors that do that. They use God's money for the wrong reasons. There is. That's the honest truth. But you have to understand that when you're giving, you're not giving to a pastor. You're not giving to a church. You're giving to God. So no matter what that pastor does with their money, with, that, with God's money, they're, they're being held accountable by God. You're still going to receive your blessing because you're being obedient to God's word. Amen? So I, I wanted to shift that real quick. Don't worry about the church. Don't worry about the pastor. Worry about who you're giving to, which is God. Amen? Let's keep going. So here at The Rock, right? The goal of the rock is to see souls saved. That's all we want. The deliverance come, the healing come. That comes with the power of God. The main goal is to see souls saved, transformed, and renewed. Amen? And in today's day and age, you need finances to be able to do that. The goal is to go out to different states, go out to different countries to preach the gospel, to win souls to God. 
So when you're giving to this ministry, when you're giving to God through this ministry, you're giving to God, but you're also helping the ministry out. Amen? This is a good ground to plan at. And I'm telling you, there's testimony in this place. People sitting in this crowd right now that have received testimony from their tithing and offerings, from their giving to the church. Amen? I'm almost done. Matthew 6.21 reminds us, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So giving has nothing to do with the amount you give, but your heart. If it's hard for you to give to God, it shows that you have lack of faith in God. It shows that you're doubting him. As we know, God loves sacrifice. He loves when you surrender something and just leave it to him. That shows him that you're really doing it, that you really have faith in him. That's when God can come. What, what pleases God? Faith. And what does the Bible say? Faith without works is dead. So shift your heart and say, you know what? I'm going to give in faith. What happened to the woman in Mark 12? What happened to her? She gave in faith all she had to live on and God said that she gave God said she gave more than everyone in the room and God blessed her. That with me? Are we together? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Almost done. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So, right here, I'm going to read this. It says, Our giving will bring a harvest of blessings beyond what we can imagine. Right? 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, the Bible, the Bible says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. When we give joyfully, we enter into a deeper level of trust and surrender to God. Giving is an act of faith. And as we step out in faith, God blesses us abundantly in return. He begins to mold our hearts and transform our minds, teaching us the value of generosity and selfishness. So when you give in faith, when you do that, when you give that sacrifice up and when you, and you surrender to God, that's when your heart can become more generous. That's when God can pour into you more. That's when God can move. Faith is what activate miracles. Amen? I want everyone to stand up real quick. Repeat this with me. Say, Father, I thank you for the opportunity to give back to you. Say, Lord, I give this offering to you in faith. I plant this seed into good soil that it may reap a harvest in Jesus name say Lord you gave your only begotten son on the cross for me because that is how much you love me say God I give to you because I love you I have faith in you I trust in you in Jesus name say I break Say it with authority. I break every chain of poverty over my life in the name of Jesus. Say it one more time. I break every chain of poverty over my life. Say, I shall prosper. I shall prosper in Jesus' name. Say, amen. Say, amen. Give God a shout of hallelujah in this place. Rebosa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we have our ways to give on the slide. We also have ushers with the baskets. They're going to walk around. Or, yeah, they're going to walk around. You can place the cash in there. Lord, I just pray for every single person given. May you bless them back to their according, according to what they need, Lord. Not what they want, but what they need. Bless them, bless them, Lord. Bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. We honor you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. 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 And how many people came from out of the state or country that are still here right now? Uh, can you guys stand up? Actually, come to the altar. I want to pray for you an impartation to bring back to your city. N no offense to anybody that's local, but.
Where are you from? Colorado. Colorado. I raised my hand earlier, but he didn't see me. Okay. Yeah, you look familiar. Um, uh, I, been, I came here in um, May. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Amen. What's up? Nice to see you. All right. Uh, so all of you came from out of the state? Where are you guys from? So where are y'all from? Oh, y'all from Miami? Man, they hungry because they, they ain't from out of the state. All right. You know what? Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who wants to have, who wants the impartation to bring revival? Just period. Who wants that? Come up. Come on. Only for that. I'm not going to start praying for deliverance and healing. I'm going to do that after. I just want to pray an impartation for those that want to spark revival. That's it. If you've already been prayed for for that, don't have consideration. Because I want to get into the healing and deliverance. Can I have all the prayer warriors come up, please? All the prayer warriors, the leadership. Can you please come up here next to me? Vamanos conmigo. Only y'all? Pastor Joel, where you at? Pastor Benji, okay. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. All right, so what we're going to do? We're going to go down the line. We're going to start laying hands on them, all right? So right now, as we pray, Father, we just ask that you impart that revival fire, Lord, that you've given us. That desire, that deep desire to just want to win souls, Lord, which comes through intimacy with you. So, Father, may you bring them to that state, however it needs to be. You know they're, where they're at in their walk. You know exactly what they need. So as we pray, may this impartation stir up the gifts, Lord. So they, they may go out there and cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, heal the blind, heal the deaf, heal those with COVID. And all these signs will point people to Jesus so that they want to be saved and in relationship with them. Let them have a deep yearning to win souls. A deep desire to want to win souls more than money, more than fame, more than their own selfish desires that we all have. May soul winning be priority, Lord, because the Bible says you wish that none would perish, but all that would come to repentance. Let us have that same desire that you have, Yahweh. And as we lay hands, we will, Father God, I pray that you would impart by your spirit everything they need in Jesus' name. Let's lay hands. Come on, men and women of God. Let's go. We're going to lay hands on them. Go down the line. Go ahead. Go down the line. You can start from any, any, any side. And after you get prayed for, if you could please sit down. Please, again, sit down after you get prayed for. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus. Let's give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Once everybody sits down, we're going to pray for healing. First thing is healing. So if you can please go to your seats. And we're going to pray for healing. Physical healing. Physical. Ah, the Lord wants to heal you. You know why God will use people, men and women of God, as mascots? Because some people haven't caught the revelation yet. You know, they're growing in the faith that it's actually Jesus who heals, right? The power of the Holy Spirit. So what God will do is use a man or woman of God to draw people on so that the man and woman of God can point them to Jesus. Does that make sense? Because God knows where people are at. And you know, God knows people a lot of times want a physical king. Where do we see that in the Bible? With Saul, the first king of Israel. You know, the prophet Samuel mourned. He cried because the people wanted a physical king when the entire time they had a king in heaven. But they wanted a physical king who took, who owned everything they owned, who had lordship over them. They wanted a physical king. Still, people today, they, they want a physical king rather than a, a king, a God, an all-powerful God they can't see. Because that concept to people is just... It's, it doesn't make any sense. Why would I worship somebody I've never seen? And that's what brings about idolatry and different things. I want to let y'all know something. Jesus Christ still heals today. I'm just praying in the spirit of God because of my faith and everyone else's faith in the building will back up the prayer and people will get healed. I don't do anything special. Not because I yell louder. Not because I say the name of Jesus 80 times. Like, it doesn't matter. If I say in the name of Jesus, be healed... You get healed. Nothing else. Amen. Amen. So if you want to get physically healed and you want to come in agreement with me in a prayer and faith, stand up where you're at. Stand up. The Bible says by his stripes, the stripes that he took, the physical stripes, because he took those painful stripes, those whips, those lashes, those scourges. He took it and never backed down. He took it and never turned away. He took all that physical torment. He was deformed. He was unrecognizable, the Bible says. They couldn't, you couldn't even recognize what he looked like because of how, how, how beat up he was. He did that for us. He overcame the flesh. The flesh never caused him. The pain in the body never caused him to back down for what God the Father told him to do. Amen. So because of that, by his stripes... We're healed. He beat the flesh. So when we say in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed, the Holy Spirit will heal you. You know why Jesus didn't do many miracles in his own hometown? Because of the, his amazed, he was amazed because of their unbelief. You know, unbelief will actually block healing. So right now I want everyone to say, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Say, I renounce unbelief. And say, Jesus, I believe you're a healer. Say, Pastor Rich is not God. Jesus, you're God. And you're going to heal me right now because you're in the building. Now, I want you guys to rate your pain one through ten before I pray. I know some of y'all can't rate it because it's internal organs or it's some type of disease. But for the ones that can actually rate the pain in their body right now, I want you to rate it. Rate it. If you have to squat, bend down, lift up, whatever, rate it one through ten. Because afterwards, after I pray and the Holy Spirit has his way, I'm going to ask for people that got healed to testify. Hallelujah. 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 So, all right. Now, let's pray. If you could put your right hand wherever your pain is, you go right ahead because you're filled with the Holy Ghost. It's like you can self-deliver, you can self-heal. That's a fact. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we all command. Everyone say, we command. We command. Right, now, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, our body to submit to the Spirit of God. Say, you must be healed right now. Say, by the stripes that Jesus took on his back, I am healed right now. Right now, say all pain go to zero. All pain leave. 
all pain leave now right now if you're if you're sitting or standing next to somebody that's standing up put your put your hand on their shoulder if you're filled with the spirit of god and there's someone next to you that's standing up put your hand on them if you feel comfortable and I want everyone that's, even if you need healing and you see someone next to you, put your hand on them too. And deacons, leaders, if you want to go lay hands, go ahead too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Full healing right now. Be healed right now. By his stripes we are healed right now. By the stripes he took we are healed right now. Right now, in the water right now, they're getting baptized. They're going to be healed right now. Delivered and healed, yeah. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. Now let's give it up for Jesus. All right. Some of you just got activated with the gift of healing that's already inside of you by the spirit of God some of you just literally prayed for healing and the person got healed check your body right now check your body wherever the pain was if you could measure it and I want you right now if you just got healed to come straight to the front if your pain that you had in your physical physical body just went away check it and come to the front and testify come to the front and testify about your healing <laughs> hallelujah where was your pain migraines and you had it right now before we prayed or even before we prayed when we were praying before you prayed it went away wow like, wow <laughs> that quick yeah that and was. what was the pain one through ten before it was sharp i mean maybe like five like a five yeah. and right now you feel nothing i feel nothing like let's give five. it up for jesus <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah all right so where was your pain woman of god jessica okay amen jessica and where, where was your pain? Um, I have a spine disease from the top of my neck down to the bottom. You had a spine I, disease? I had, yes. Okay, and what was the pain, one through ten? It was a seven. My head was pounding. While I was your head was pounding and it was a seven. Mm -hmm. What do you feel now? I feel nothing. Zero? Nothing. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello. Where was your pain, woman of God? I had a hiatal hernia. My stomach was swollen. And when you prayed, it went flat. What? So Jesus healed you when the prayer began. And that, that, that hernia went away. Wow. Yeah. He never ceases to amaze me. Wow. What do you feel now? Amazing. It's, it's flat. It's, it's flat. flat. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come up a minute, God. Man of God, man of God. What's up, man? So where was your pain at before? I had lower back pain. What was it one through ten before? Like a six or seven. And what do you feel now? Nothing. Zero. Yeah, zero. Bend down. Let me see. What do you feel? Whoa, he touched the ground. You don't feel nothing. Hallelujah. Jesus is a healer, bro. And it ain't coming back either. It's done. Papito. Now nah, he got the tat on his um, neck. That's why I said it. Where was your pain? My back. I was in an accident. You were in an accident? A tow truck ran me over. Two cars. Wait, hold on. You just said a tow truck ran you over? Yes. And the car that it was towing. My back always hurts. It was hurting the whole Wait, surface. were you in a car or you were on the street? I was on the street. You were walking? No, he was towing like a car. And you were running after it? No, I was oh. just standing. It was the wrong place, wrong time. Wow. And, and the car, it actually ran you over on your back? Yeah. The tow truck and the car. And you're still alive? Yes. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let's give it up for Jesus. Wow. Hey, when it's not your time to go, it's not your time to go. He got the keys to hell and death. Ain't nobody dying or going to hell unless Jesus Christ gives that green light. Hallelujah. So, where was your pain? Your back? My 
back. And what was the pain one through ten before? Like an eight, nine. Like an eight or nine out of I ten. Feel nothing right now. And you don't feel nothing. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me see. Hey, let's give it up for Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got healed. Come up then, man of God. What you doing? What's up, man? How you been? Everything good? It's amazing, man. I, I came in here. I had this little back pain, and I dung all the way down. All the way down your, the side, your side? Sides, yeah. I, I could have, I, in fact, I was sitting here throughout the entire program, and after that, I... Hey! <laughs> good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. You know, man, I got fully healed. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Everyone? All right, now what we're going to do, who needs deliverance? Raise your hand. I know some of y'all came, came for some deliverance. Amen. That's good. You come up here, you come here, you're going to get delivered. Amen. No demon's going to stay in you. No, you're going to get delivered from every demon who the sun sets free is free indeed, and you're going to go home free. Amen. But what we're going to do first is we're going to do the communion, and then all the, all the prayer warriors are going to line up. And you guys can stay up here for communion. All the prayer warriors are going to line up. These are all leadership in the church and the center, and they're going to they're gonna pray for everyone who needs prayer, even if it's, it's something other than deliverance. Whatever you need. Who, need. who has a need in prayer in here? Look, let me tell you something. You came to the house of prayer. We want to pray for you. We actually want to pray for you. So if you need prayer from anything, for anything, from anything, for anything, you come to the front after communion. Amen? But right now, we're about to partake in Holy Communion. You guys know how important it is to take communion. The, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. There's a spiritual blessing when you take communion, especially in unity. Amen. So Deacon Lewis is about to give a powerful, Holy Spirit-filled message. Amen. I want y'all to give it up for Deacon Lewis. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's take communion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, man. God is so good. You guys see what God is doing, how he's moving. And, you know, who doesn't have a communion cup? Raise your hand. Somebody could go around the baskets right there. Keep your hands up, guys, so you guys could get a communion cup. While I wait for everybody to have one, um, that was actually very prophetic on uh, what Apostle Rich was uh, just saying about the communion. It's, it's very important. It's, it's honor, um, respect. I mean, think about, think about what, what God is doing right here in the church. He's healing people. He's setting the captives free. People are, are, bring, are giving their life to Christ. And not only that, but think about what he did for us. He literally gave his only begotten son so that we may have eternal life. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to read a scripture first. Um. And I'm going to break it down and I'm going to talk about something that uh, kind of really hit me. It's, it's important. So um, I'm going to re be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm going to start on verse 23. So this is Paul, right? He says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He knew he was going to be betrayed. He knew he was going to be sacrificed. And he still said, take of me. He still broke bread. No matter what was going to happen. And he still offers himself for us. He still does that today. It doesn't matter what you do. Like Apostle was uh, preaching on guilt. It doesn't matter what you've done before. It doesn't matter. It's in the past. He's forgiven you and he's forgotten it. And he still offers himself to you. No matter how many times you rejected him, no matter how many times you, get, you turned away from him, he still gave himself to you. So I'm going to keep reading. And then it says, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So anyone who eats his, this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily 
is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. That is why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. So I wanted to read that first because I want you guys to really comprehend how important this is. This isn't just a cheap cup that you just eat a little piece of bread and, and drink a little juice. This is a remembrance of what Jesus did for you. This is his body. This is his blood. And one thing that uh, we were actually talking about the other day, um, the Hebrew word for worship is shaka. And one of the, the meanings of that word is to bow down. Right? So we all know that worship isn't just singing the songs with the worship team or in our secret places, not just singing. It's the heart posture. But think about it. He's the king of kings and he died for you. He, got, he became lower than the angels and he died for you. He's the king of kings. And when you're in the presence of the king, you bow down. That's how you worship him. You bow down to him because he is the most high God. And because of what he did for you on that cross. And before we take this, I also want you to think about anything right now. Anything that you might have done. Anything that you might need to confess, that you might need to repent of, and give it to, to Jesus. Give it to him on the cross because he already paid the price with this. The price is already paid. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to take a bow before the king as I eat of his, his flesh. You may take out the bread. Before he was sacrificed, he broke of the bread and said, eat of my flesh. We're eating with Jesus. We're eating of him. Take the bread and eat. And now... The precious blood. The blood that paid it all. Our sins, our sickness, everything. Everything. It wasn't just sins. It was everything. All the pain, the heartache, everything that we go through, he took it on the cross. With his blood, he paid that price. With his blood, we are washed. With his blood, we are renewed, transformed. We no longer have to walk in guilt or condemnation. We can walk free because of what he did. Let us remember him. Let us remember what he did. Everything that he did. And let us drink of his blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just want to take the time right now to just look at you, Jesus. You still have those holes in your hand, those holes that Thomas needed to see to believe in you. But we, don't, we can't even see you physically, and we still believe in you. We have faith in you and what you've done for us. And we just want to thank you. Thank you for paying that price on the cross for us, for taking those beatings, those hits, those, those whips, those lashes, Everything, everything that you went through so that we can be okay. We thank you, Jesus. We honor you and we worship you. We worship you. We worship you because you deserve it all. The highest praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, so what we're going to do right now, I'm just going to close this out in prayer. And again, if you need, um, if, you, if, you want, if you want to come up for a prophetic word, if you need healing, deliverance, anything, if you just need prayer for a breakthrough in your life, 
we want to come in agreement with you. The Bible says where one or two agree, every word is established in heaven. The Bible also says where there's two or three gathered in his name, he's in the midst, he's here right now, and he's seeing the agreement of the saints. Amen. So you come up here and you receive your word. Receive what the Lord wants to speak to you about through these vessels. Amen. So I'm first going to pray a, a, a blessing over you guys. It's called a benediction. Amen. If everyone can stand. I just want to declare something over you guys. The book of Isaiah says that every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, right, will be condemned. And this is the heritage the, her the inheritance, the heritage of the servants of the Lord and our righteousness is of God. Amen. So right now, I declare over all of you that are going through any type of word curse, any type of slander, gossip, any type of, any type of persecution, I declare right now in the name of Jesus Christ over you that no weapon formed against you will prosper and that every tongue that rises up against you in judgment will be condemned. I declare that that, that every enemy that comes at you, that comes one way towards you, will flee seven ways. And that God will actually prepare a table for you before the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. If you come in agreement, I want you to say in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I pray that also angels will be assigned to all of you, any more angels that you need. I pray that you would go out and evangelize and God will light you up with a fire. I pray that you would win souls because a wise man wins souls, that the Lord would increase you in wisdom. I pray that the Lord will continue to favor you, favor, bless you. I pray for more grace in your life, more mercy. And I pray, most importantly, that you would fall so, so deeply in love with Jesus Christ, that you would desire him more than even life itself, and that you would love others as yourself. And I pray all these prayers as a blessing over the congregation in Jesus' name. And the church says together... Amen. God bless you guys. And if you're not getting prayer, if you if you 